good evening, everybody. Welcome to our playthrough of Silent Hill. If you didn't know, it's a series about a town in Maine with a dark past. Based on the real town of Centralia, Pennsylvania, in which a coal fire underground turned the place into a ghost town overnight, Silent Hill is a sleepy tourist town with a darkness hiding underneath the surface. A different reality of fog and one of shadow and rust and metal where a cult's evil god spawns angels who take the form of your own inner demons to torment you for your guilt and sin. Except no, it's not. I lied, all of that. I lied about all of it. None of that's true. No! <laughs> Stop it, you're so mean to me. <laughs> Y'all are gonna make Matt have a conniption. <laughs> but first, a word from our sponsor. Did you know that when you're watching your favorite streaming services, your choices are limited by which country you're in? They region lock those things. Did you know that your access on Netflix or Amazon streaming might be different? If you were in Canada, that's because capitalism is a system that rewards ownership and exploitation. I don't have a VPN to sell you. I just want you to overthrow capital. Let's go, comrades. You got nothing to lose but your chains. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been worse. Could have been for Manscaped. <laughs> fair, fair. But all of that was a lie. But a lot of people think that it's true, and I want to explain why. By the end of this video, I am going to go into the reason that a GameFAQ writer wound up becoming the de facto interpretation for the entirety of the Silent Hill series, which resulted in people believing things about these games that don't happen in them. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Great, it's the foreskin guy. It's not the foreskin guy. <laughs> it's not. It's a different guy. <laughs> Foreskin guy's got to be eating pretty good recently. <laughs> All right, let's look at this Silent Hill manual for a little bit. Back in the day when I bought a video game, what you did was you open up that case and you take out the instruction manual and you read that all the way home. And if you don't get to play the game that day, you take it to school and you read it there. And you just pour over uh, a game's manual and imagine that you're playing it because that's how we did it. That's, that's what we did. <laughs> One of the things that's nice about this is that, um, hey, look, there's story in here. <laughs> Books and video games. You gotta be joking. You're pulling my leg. You're yanking my crank to me. <laughs> You're working my hog. Did you reading to learn the lore and not on a wiki? A little book. I'm just gonna read from the instruction manual real quick so we can catch up on this story. So we know where this game is starting, okay? The resort town of Silent Hill slips into quiet desolation now that the peak of development and growth has passed by. The memories of a tragic fire seven years ago still haunt the townsfolk, and with the tourist season long past, there is hardly a shadow stirring. Harry Mason prefers to take late vacations with his daughter Cheryl. This year, they've made plans to visit Silent Hill. Due to car trouble, they reach the outskirts of the town late at night. Cheryl is sleeping in the back seat as a motorcycle cop roars past his truck. Moments later, Harry spots the motorcycle dumped on the shoulder. There is no one to be seen. It paints an ominous picture. Suddenly, a shadow appears in front of the car. Harry turns the wheel in panic. The car slides off the edge of the road and into a gully. Harry eventually regains consciousness. Cheryl is nowhere to be seen. It is unusually cold. Snow is falling out of season. Where has Cheryl disappeared to? Harry walks toward a town he sees in the distance. Game objective! Find Harry's missing daughter, Cheryl! <laughs> I just want to point out two things that I find a little funny about this. One of which is they call Harry's Jeep a truck. Uh... <laughs> Harry Mason's a writer because that's what every main character in a Stephen King story is. Losing his wife to disease has left a shadow over his soul. His daughter is the only bright spot in his life. He goes to Silent Hill to go on vacation with his daughter to be mired in bizarre events. That's part of the vacation. That was the beginning of this tale. Or was it predetermined somehow? That's a truth that Harry has yet to discover. Ooh. Harry Mason's writer bio, Twitter bio. 
She lost her mother at a young age and lived with her father. A gentle, normal child. She goes on vacation with her father to Silent Hill. However, an unimaginable event is waiting to unfold. Sybil! She's an officer that patrols near Silent Hill. A sudden call causes her to investigate Silent Hill. She is faithful to her duties and investigates Silent Hill on her own. Little bit clunky in the writing. You've used the word Silent Hill three times in two sentences. Alessa. Harry runs across this mysterious girl several times. Who or what is she? Warranty information. This warranty is in lieu of any other warranties or other prison. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, we don't need to read that part. Okay. <laughs> This packaging and manual, I don't know if it was the best translated. <laughs> the warranty is vital to the plot. Yo, there's images in this game. Be aware that they, this game contains images and scenes. I think Silent Hill is better than Resident Evil. Uh, 100% agree. <laughs> that Spanish guitar is so good. So fucking iconic. Oh Jesus, you bomb wore mask before hanging ass with a nostalgia bomb like that. Bomb. Oh, the PlayStation intro. <laughs> We're in Pennsylvania. No! Silent Hill, okay, may or may not take place in Maine. The only place that information comes from is the Silent Hill visual novel, but the visual novel is also its own bag of snakes. The visual novel says that Harry's wife died in a car crash, where the instruction manual says she died from disease, so who fucking knows? Play novel says Maine, and I'm willing to believe it because there's nothing in the game that contradicts that, but also I just, you know, be aware that that's... I can answer this. <laughs> it takes place in Maine because small town Maine is just like this, and I wish I was kidding. Mm hmm Makes sense. <laughs> The way the music fades out there is so fucking good. This is like one of my favorite games. Thank you all so much for being here for this. This is your first interaction with anything Silent Hill. Yo, thanks for choosing this to be your intro to this series. I don't know why you do that. Go play this game. It's great. So I think what I am going to do for this playthrough is keep this as spoiler free as possible, even though I know most of y'all are aware of what's going on in this game. There's a couple things I'm gonna I'm gonna have to talk about. I'm not talking about stuff until it happens. Precisely. What a strong intro. I love my daddy. Wrong game. <laughs> One of the things I really like is that this game starts with Harry waking up here. I think that the instruction manual saying things like that Harry was going to vacation in Silent Hill or that this place is like a ghost town make people think that there's some kind of alternate dimension where this town is bustling and inhabited, but that's not true. <laughs> Harry, how did you do this? We ro like rolled down a hill? To get here, I guess? That is too banged up to drive. You fucked it up done good. <laughs> That's impressive. Footsteps. Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? Where are you going? Hey, wait! Stop! The game's music is perfect. It knows when to use silence to great effect. These kind of moments when you're wandering through the fog and the game is quiet and tense are the moments that this series really succeeds, you know? This is what makes this game different from something like Resident Evil. And it's a shame that like every game after this has less and less and less of this. Like two's got a good amount of wandering around, three's got less of it. And then starting with four, it's just like downhill from there. Okay, time to talk about the use of effective imagery. I'm sure y'all are familiar with environmental storytelling, right? Y'all played a f 
a Bethesda game before where you found like a skeleton sitting on a toilet that has a grenade in it and you're like environmental storytelling i love that the transition between these two scenes is a low like low worm's eye view camera of a door that says beware of dog cut to an opposite bird's eye view of whatever this blood and guts and gore is and it is so evocative is this a dog or did a dog do this like immediately your mind is filled with all kinds of like <laughs> questions that the fear aspect of your brain starts filling in <laughs> it's showing so much more than telling i i love it what the what is it I love that we just don't get an answer, and we're never going to. This shot right here of the camera dynamically panning is another thing that you don't see in Resident Evil, because like Resident Evil is all pre-rendered at the time, right? The fact that the camera comes up and then comes down Dutch sideways is an indication that something here is wrong, unsettling, dizzying. It's a shot that like you don't get in a lot of games <laughs> and they are 100% flexing yeah it's a kind of a surrendering of control I agree with that yeah the fact that the player is not controlling the camera gives the camera a quality of leering it makes you feel like Harry is being watched by the camera more than like the player is viewing through it it's like uh those scenes in a movie where you see the camera moving and it's supposed to be a first person perspective of like the monster following a person or something like a predator curiously stalking its prey exactly that sort of thing right better than nothing i guess the siren in the background broken wheelchair what's this doing here so we're already being introduced to a lot of the themes that the game is going to have or at least a lot of the imagery that the game is going to have we're getting a lot of medical imagery. There's going to be a lot of metal and rust. There is a more traditional violin in here, which is closer to what you'd expect from like a horror soundtrack. But behind it, there's this urban, like mechanical noise that's not musical in any way. this what's going on here i love this fucking thing how much it looks like a person <laughs> but without actually being on so that's different Was I dreaming? How do you feel? Oh, like I've been run over by a truck. But I'm all right, I guess. Have you seen a little girl just turned seven last month? Short, black hair. My daughter. The only person I've seen in this town is you. Where is everybody? I'd tell you if I knew, believe me. But from what I can tell, something bizarre is going on. What's your name? Harry. Harry Mason. Sybil Bennett. I'm a police officer from Brams, the next town over. Hi, Sybil. I'm going back. Hold it. Where do you think you're going? My daughter. I've got to find her. No way. It's dangerous out there. In that case, I need to find her now. Cheryl's my little girl. I can't just leave her out there by herself. Have you got a gun? Um, no. But this is America, Harry. Take this and hope you don't have to use it. Now listen to me, before you pull the trigger, know who you're shooting and don't do it unless you have to. I love a cop who will just don't give you her gun. <laughs> Got it? Yeah, thanks. You do best to stay nearby. I'll be back with help as quick as I can. So 
I want to talk about a couple of the things we've seen so far in this game and what what it's doing. There's a really, really effective way to create a disgust reaction in your audience without showing anything that's like blood or guts or gore or any of that. It's actually really, really, really simple. And this game utilizes it so well. Okay, first, take something that you expect to be clean, like hospital equipment or a kitchen, anywhere where food is prepared or like, you know, people have open sores, like hospital equipment where you, you expect some manner of cleanliness because we know that like, if these things are not clean, that's really, that creates an immense disgust reaction. And then just make it dirty throw a little bit of rust in there, rusty hospital equipment. There you go. And suddenly you've created a, a visceral reaction in the audience. It's a little cheap, but it's very effective. Yeah, like a version of the Uncanny Valley. We're seeing something that we expect to be one way, but it's another way. And we know that it being that other way is dangerous. We know that like rusty hospital equipment is like, well, that's a recipe for fucking tetanus, <laughs> you know? <sighs> Yeah, that unsanitary disgust. I think I think that's really common as a form of like fear, right? It's a little bit difficult to do in a way that creates like, yeah, horror. So that's one of the things that's going on in this game. And the other thing that I want to point out that this game is doing is bringing up the the image of sleep. So Harry starts this game by waking up in his car. When we see those creatures appear for the first time, it starts getting dark beforehand. When we get attacked by them, it fades to black and then Harry wakes up like from a dream or a nightmare. They're connecting the idea of this horror imagery and these monsters um, with the idea of dreams. This is the kind of thing that you're also going to see in for instance, Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's Ladder does this a whole bunch, actually. One of the endings of this game, the bad minus ending, Harry is dead in his Jeep, and this whole thing was a dream that he had, just like an occurrence on Owl Creek Bridge, which uh, Jacob's Ladder is an adaptation of. Anything that starts with somebody waking up is immediately suspect. Yes. I do want to say that this is not a dream, but that is one of the possible endings, which is cool and actually makes sense like as a bad ending it actually makes a lot of sense because they're setting that kind of thing up beforehand because dreams and sleep are a huge theme of this game even before that ending happens right it's not just a dream i also love this study damn it poster i just want to talk about how much i love this poster that says study damn it <laughs> We'll see more of these in the school. I believe it is a real poster. The notepads. Our main character is a writer. How do we tie that theme into the game? Someday someone may experience these bizarre events. Hopefully they will find my notes useful. Our main character saves the game by writing these notes. What's important about this is that that's going to be a thing in Silent Hill 3. When Harry's daughter returns to Silent Hill, she's actually going to find one of these save points and read Harry's notes that he left there. So these are canonical. These exist. They're diegetic. They are real. <laughs> That's cool. You want to see another excellent use of camera angles? Check this out. Before we pick up these items, the camera angle is over Harry's shoulder, but we are going to get a flashlight, a map, and they use picking up the map as a transition between one camera angle and the other. So now we're staring right into Harry's face, and I want you to pay attention to the window behind him uh, when we start to walk away here. Did, you can see it just for a sec, but there's something flying by the window just for a second. Fuck, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good, isn't it? It's just like... Oh, it's just out of the corner of your eye. You can't even be sure that you saw it the first time, right? <laughs> Unless you're really looking for it. We're going to get my favorite voice line in possibly all of games. What's that? Huh. Radio. What's going on with that radio? I love that. <laughs> What's going on with that radio? <laughs> Ooh. 
No! Fucking attempt. <laughs> this is not a dream. What's happening to this place? Yo! This is not a dream. What is going on with that radio? Hmm. I've read a couple explanations for these guys. Uh, the best one I've come across is all of the monsters in this game are things that scared a little girl. These, I believe, are supposed to be representative of pterodactyls from H.G. Wells' Journey to the Center of the Earth. I'm gonna stop you right there. Don't listen to this bunny. Uh, I don't know how I got this so wrong. First of all, Journey to the Center of the Earth is a Jules Verne novel. Secondly, I was thinking of something completely different. The Silent Hill wiki mentions the book The Lost World by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, but I don't think that's quite right either, but it is what I was thinking of because my head is full of fluff. What I actually probably should have thought about is that they're probably more representative of uh, the flying monkeys from The Wizard of Oz. The fact that they attack this diner here, though, is probably more of an allusion to a novel by Stephen King called The Mist, where there are a bunch of uh, bug creatures and pterosaur-like creatures that attack the windows uh, very similar to this not to mention the fact that they come from the fog uh, back to the video play some pinball instead <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> where could Cheryl have gone I guess I'll check that alley again another fun little reference right here this newspaper stand has a front page spread which reads bill skins fifth which is a reference to a similar headline in silence of the lambs this is the little reference <laughs> you probably would not be able to read that on a playstation uh before we go back to the alley i want to show off my favorite store real quick it's poston market i really like poston market <laughs> it it just tickles me <laughs> I can't explain it. Silent Hill has the widest fucking streets, doesn't it? Like, look at this. This is a residential road. It's like a fucking highway. Silent Hill and their 10 lane residential streets. Jaywalkers were common in Silent Hill. <laughs> you know, walkable streets like these are illegal to build in most American cities nowadays. You know, walkable architecture like this. <laughs> So there's a reason for this, right? They could have made reasonable sized streets, but they didn't. I never noticed the size of those streets. No, you don't. It's almost subconscious. It's not the kind of thing you notice because you're never seeing both sides of the street. Because of the fog that's there, you don't actually wind up seeing how big the actual streets are. So it's really difficult for you to even gauge the size of these things. Is it a hardware limitation? Okay, so yes and no. So the fog is something of a hardware limitation. You do see distance fog like this in stuff like N64 and original PlayStation games, like early 3D games. Before low density models, like load on distance models and stuff like that, became popular after like, I don't know, Spyro. The easy way to hide loading assets was behind fog. So yes, it's there to do that but also it is there for atmosphere. They did make more fog than they needed to. They could have had much less fog <laughs> if they wanted to, but they decided to make things feel more claustrophobic and disorientating because you can't see that far into the distance, which makes you kind of lose your way. It makes you feel a little more confined, even if you're in giant areas. Even if you're on the biggest, widest fucking street you've ever seen, you, you can't really tell because it's because of how disorientating the fog is, right? It makes it sort of dreamlike. You're orientated by sidewalks and walls and the buildings around you. And if you wander out into the street, 
the fog makes it so that you can lose all of that and you just wander out into nothingness. Like, I can orientate myself to this building right now, but if I wander out here, like, things start to become formless. You can lose yourself. I like it. But I also think that things in this game are that way because they scared a little girl, and I think that's probably how she would have experienced these streets. If you were a little girl trying to cross the streets at seven years old, they might seem a lot bigger than they actually are. Uh, dogs are also another thing that scared me. Ooh, woo? What's all this? Oh, I love this part, by the way. This part's so good. <laughs> Gotta go to school? Is it the Cheryl sketchbook? Hmm. She's at the school. Hmm. This map is so handy. This is one of the best maps in video games. This sketchbook cover. This picture. It's me. It's me for real. I like that Harry looks at this fucking face and he's just like, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that looks exactly like me. <laughs> that's just like me. I'm also derping out of my mind. <laughs> There we go. He just like me. He just like me for real. <laughs> he like me for real though. <laughs> Love that the camera zoomed out and his in-game model just look like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first picture that Cheryl drew in the sketchbook that I gave her on her fifth birthday. Aww. Yeah, we get that steel pipe. Hmm. <laughs> this is a good camera. This is also a very good camera. Doghouse, Levin Street. Dang. I know people probably have questions like, why is there a big gaping hole in the middle of this fucking street? It took half of this house with it. I have answers, don't you worry. You will get them. Is the coal mine right? There's no coal mine! There is no coal mine! <sighs> okay, there is a coal mine in Silent Hill. Well, was. Okay, there was a coal mine in Silent Hill back in the 1700s, and it dried out before 1800. I swear to God. It was abandoned b because it, it dried out. There's no coal in it. <gasps> Yo, there's a house key. Hidden in the doghouse. Okay. You know, nothing unusual here. Dang. I should have checked out the doghouse first, because that's when he says the line. I think it's a doghouse, but I can't be sure, because there's no dog around. Which, that's great. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I can get in the house. I just don't want to fight the doggos. God, do you remember when TVs were this fucking big? Nothing useful. What are you talking about? There's some handgun bullets. Wow, what an interesting painting on this wall. Hmm. I wonder if that's going to come back later. So I want to say, this game, from a modern perspective, has actually aged super, super well in that its signposting is so good. It's really, really clear as to where you should be going. So for instance, the game starts you out with nowhere to go except down the street to the alley to find Cheryl. When you leave the cafe, he says, oh, I should go back to that alley. It marks that alley on your map. All of the roads are blocked off, but the quickest way to get to Midwich Elementary is probably to go down Matheson, which is where you find the note that says, hey, go to the doghouse on Levin Street. So you go to Levin Street, you look for a doghouse. There's only one house that has a doghouse in front of it. Obviously, you're going to go in that house. And then when you go in that house, they're going to go, nope, this shit's super locked. But on the wall here, oh, look, it's a cute little map that just tells you uh, uh, where all the keys are. And then you copy it onto your map, and now you've got your map that tells you to go to this alley, this arrow, and this circle. And you're like, fuck, what a good game. What good game design. <laughs> It's so nice. This game is incredibly kind. For a game from this time, it's just incredibly good at signposting. Oh, hey. 
Who's that good looking guy? Who's that like a good looking guy in the pharmacy? How can you outrun Doggo? Doggo is fast? <laughs> Harry's also pretty fast. Mm. Yeah. Alright, fine. Fine, I'll use bullet. So anyways, I started blasting. Mm. I want some soft drink snacks. 99 cent egg and leg. So we're told to go to this alleyway. The only thing of interest here though is a giant gate that says off limits, don't fucking go in here, which is awesome. I love that that's how they grab your attention and show you, hey, you can go in here is by a big sign that says, don't fucking go in here. It's so good. It makes you feel like you're doing something naughty. When you get close enough, you just see, oh, oh, that's a dog head. Hmm. That's gross. There's something morbidly funny about it. Key of Woodman. I love beer. I want to go to Ghoul. What do they sell at Ghoul? <laughs> Look at this. You wouldn't even think about walking over this precipice or like out onto that branch unless the camera angle did this. How brilliant is that? <laughs> I love the way that these, like, fucking bottomless pits were done. Good catch, Switch! Yes, they absolutely are. The same way that the monsters in this game are representative of things that scared a particular little girl, all of the puzzles are things that she liked. And one of those things is the Wizard of Oz. So we get the key of Scarecrow, key of Woodman, and the key of Lion. Holding on stream? You can't do that. Did they forget the fog here? So, good question. There are times of this game when the fog recedes and the world turns darker. During these segments of darkness, there are generally slightly more monsters around. You get a little more industrial noise, and that siren usually precedes the transition between light and dark. People took this to mean that the real Silent Hill that Harry was going to vacation in and the world with the fog and the world with the darkness are different universes or dimensions or something. And that's not true. <laughs> I just want to put it out there that that is not what is happening. It's just getting darker. There is a reason for it. There is a reason for it. <laughs> so, I gotta talk to y'all about a movie called Kindergarten Cop starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Back in the 90s, if you were a Japanese video game developer that was part of a small team of other failed products that was put together because Konami decided they wanted that sweet, sweet Resident Evil money and they were gonna get a group of like you know, 12 to 14 developers together and just uh, uh, throw them into a room and be like, make us a Resident Evil. You probably don't have money to go on a scouting trip to the US to set your game there. So you don't really know what American buildings are gonna look like, necessarily. You've probably seen them in like media. What's a nice, cheap way to figure out what an American middle school would look like if you didn't have the money to visit. <laughs> and yeah, there's not a lot of internet, right? Oh, you rent a movie. <laughs> you rent a movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> so I would like to show y'all what the movie Kindergarten Cop... <laughs> what the movie Kindergarten Cop looks like on this side and what Silent Hill looks like on the other side here. So this is Midwich Elementary, and this is 
a middle school in kindergarten cop, which I'm going to guess is actually probably a high school. This doesn't look like a middle school I've ever seen, but okay. We'll just go with it. It's fine. So you're like, uh, what do posters look like on the walls of a middle school? <laughs> what kind of things do we do we post? Uh, what do we put, you know, in the nurse's office? What do school buses look like? <laughs> so there's a lot of a lot of imagery they borrowed for Silent Hill from the hit Hollywood film Kindergarten Cop, which, you know, there are worse ways to do it. If it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. Exactly. You know what is silly, though, is how much Midwich Elementary is not an American middle school. Because here's where it gets even more interesting. <laughs> At least I think so. Because they modeled this after and borrowed, like, little posters and things from Kindergarten Cop, they wound up with what is architecturally an American school. There's the there's those posters, by the way. This is, this is a little bit ornate for like an American school. You got your hallways with your lockers and everything. Yeah, sure. Okay, you got an American school in aesthetic. But the thing is, you built it with a clock tower and a giant courtyard in a square like a Japanese school. <laughs> Not like... Not like an American one. You get look at an American middle school and they're like L-shaped, maybe U-shaped. Like generally you wind up with a building that's kind of got its courtyard off to the side. <laughs> like, yeah, there's a gym or a cafeteria or something. And that's not the... <laughs> I did not see this as weird. As an American, it's incredibly weird to have it built around a courtyard like this. You, that does not happen. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, very strange. I, I think it's great. It's weird. <laughs> it's a cute mix of like almost a Japanese layout with like American aesthetics just kind of skinned over it. It's very cute. <laughs> Yeah, I love stuff like like the locker room down here. Why do you have a locker room that doesn't abut into the gym? That's where that should go, right? You go to the locker room so that you can change before you go into gym. <laughs> what else is a locker room for? <laughs> My high school had an internal courtyard? High schools and colleges sometimes will. But I don't think middle schools are well known for that, personally. You do get some private schools that do stuff like this, I will say. A lot of public schools don't, though. I just think the idea of having an internal courtyard and a clock tower is just kind of not the most American thing. <laughs> More Ronaldo Gordon. This must be a list of teachers. I love all these bloody notes. God, I love the way this game sounds. All right, so let's check the clock tower. The hands are stopped at 10 o'clock. Okay. So what's our schedule for 10 o'clock? So we need gold in an old man's palm, the future hidden in his fist, exchange for sage's water in the alchemy laboratory, which I'm going to guess, well, there is a laboratory in the school, right? Right upstairs. Yo, a friend in need is a friend indeed. So, fun fact, uh, y'all probably know this, but when this game was released in Europe, they changed the enemies in this area. These ones are called, I'm gonna get this wrong because I don't care about the monster names in Silent Hill, but I'm gonna say these ones are called Mumblers, and they replaced them with Claw Hands, which are an enemy that shows up later in the sewers. They're a little more green. I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, you did get this wrong. The creatures in the school in the original Japanese release were mumblers, which are the ones with the little claws. When they localized the game for NTSC regions, they changed those into a creature called Gray Children, which were also in one of the early prototype builds for the game. So they just had a little more development time to add those in. So the mumblers were replaced by Gray Children for the NTSC release. When they again localized it for PAL regions, they were changed back to 
to mumblers and this does seem to be a case of censoring them because the European regions uh, don't like the violence against the children's and also the gray children from the American release do show up in demo builds from the European release. So that that seems to be the case. We'll let you get back to it. <laughs> Here's another fun fact for you, though. There's a newspaper clipping that only shows up in the European release of this game. Now, that sounds weird and non-canon, right? But here's the weird thing. It's in the data of every version of the game, and it was translated for the US version. It's just that the trigger to cause it to appear was bugged in the US and Japanese releases. So while all of the text was translated, it's just, it, it didn't exist anywhere other than in the data. And when they released it in Europe, they fixed the, the bug that caused it not to appear. Okay, hey, here's the original, original article says, investigation stalled, PTV dealers still at large. Suspicious deaths continue. First, the anti-drug mayor, now a narcotics officer, dies of a sudden heart failure of unknown cause. Are there others? It's pretty old. Fire broke out in town, six homes destroyed. Charred body of Alessa Gillespie 7 found in aftermath. Cause of fire under investigation. Show source as basement of Gillespie home. Blaze now believed caused by malfunction of antiquated boiler. The date of the blaze, it's the same day we found Cheryl. Now, that's actually pretty important info for the story. And it's like, you should be able to find it right here in this school. Um, and due to a bug, uh, you don't. <laughs> so like, I don't know. Do you want to consider that canon? You can if you want to. Fist shut tight as if never to let go. There is a chemical. What are we gonna do with chemical? Extreme hand sanitizer? You're too right. Concentrated hydrochloric acid. Yeah, that'll sanitize your hands right the fuck off. <laughs> that'll sanitize the skin right off them hands. <laughs> So it turns out that chemical was a solution to this problem. Even though it's not a solution, it's a solvent. <laughs> it's a gold medallion, I take it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, I love the squeaky little ones. Having the squeak ghosts literally fall down. They do. They're so cute. <laughs> Does Harry have any reason to be doing all this, or is he doing it because we're piloting him in a video game? He's doing it because he's like the best dad. He's like, my little girl is somewhere in this town, and I don't care how many fucking monsters I have to kill to get her back. <laughs> the hands are stopped at 12. Hmm... So another running trend in this game that I love is when you are presented with dialogue or text that doesn't make any sense in the moment and you go, what the fuck is that? And then when you go back and do it again, you wind up picking up a lot of the details that some other character had that you didn't. This is the kind of game where playing through it again is the best way to understand it. So for example, we just used acid to cleanse that hand using an ingredient that's used to melt gold. And the note that told us to do that says, gold in an old man's palm, the future hidden in his fist, exchange for sage's water. So like, now it, now it makes sense, right? So the gold is in the old man's palm, because obviously there's a gold medallion in the fist. The future is the golden sun. No, when we put the gold medallion in the clock, time advanced from 10 to 12. So the future we accessed, yeah, by getting that gold medallion, exchange for sage's water, also known as aquia regis, hydrochloric acid the kind of aquia regia yeah so now all of this fits together doesn't it 
A place with songs and sound, Silver Guidepost is untapped in lost tongues, awakening at the ordained order. I love this camera angle too. This is another good one. So, we got a piano. We've got keys stained in blood. We can... Tippity tap them. Some of them appear broken. Okay. And we have some music here, written in blood. A tale of birds without a voice. First flew the greedy pelican, eager for the reward, white wings flailing. Then came a silent dove, flying beyond the pelican as far as he could. A raven flies in, flying higher than the dove, just to show that he can. A swan glides in to find a peaceful spot next to another bird. Finally, out comes a crow, coming quickly to a stop, yawning, and then napping. Who will show the way? Who will be the key? Who will lead to the silver reward? I'm just going to solve this puzzle, but if you want to solve it for yourself, then you want to pay attention to the words without a voice. It's the keys which do not work. That seems to be the clue. Wait, the silent keys in a certain order. I guess the raven and crows are black keys. Correct. We got two black keys, one here and one here. The top and the bottom one. And then we got these two and this white one. This is actually a decent logic puzzle. I know, right? And translated decently too. First flew the greedy pelican. So we, we're not sure where he sits, but the terms eager for the reward, I'm guessing he, he probably sits down pretty quick. Then came the dove flying as far as he could, so that's probably all the way at the end, right? The raven flies in higher than the dove, though, so that's probably the black key next to him. Swan glides in to find a peaceful spot next to another bird. So he's not next to the raven, but he could be next to the dove, because there's two white keys that are next to each other. Out comes a crow coming quickly to a stop, yawning and then napping. So, in short, the bird is the word. Correct. So the only space that a white key could be next to another is actually this one, which is next to the dove. So the pelican must be this one. So you'd go, pelican goes here, the dove flies as far as he could, then the raven flies higher, then the swan sits next to another bird, and then the crow comes out and sits down quickly. And then we get the silver reward. I think it's a good puzzle. It's pretty good. Bun and his pazuzus. I just like pazuzus. Can you blame me? Y'all nah. leave me alone. Every time a kid plays a specific set of notes, the teacher had to pick that metal back up. <laughs> so I'm gonna say that the piano is not like that usually. The puzzles in this game are... If I say the term... A creation of the nightmare. Well, that's something I haven't explained yet, but I, I will later. This game presents a creature that Bun truly fears more than all others. Children. I do hate children. They're so gross. Filthy nasty things. Glad I never was one. The hands are stopped at five. Okay, I want to show off my favorite scare in this whole game. It's the best. It's my favorite. I'm going to walk us through it because I got to explain how it works. Uh, there will be a jump scare. It doesn't happen yet, though. It happens later. Okay. This locker room steers you around using the camera until you come to... This moving locker right here. It's quite loud. What is going to jump out of the locker? <laughs> it's a cat. How did it open the door? Oh. Uh oh. And nothing inside. Don't worry, I'll explain why this is my favorite one ever. Ah, uh, yes. The good old spring loaded cat. Nothing like a scare that actually has no stakes to get the VPN up. Oh, don't worry. That cheap cat jump scare is actually just the setup for the best scare in the game. It's it's just set up. So here's the clue for the thing with the birds we did. Place with songs and sound, a silver guidepost is untapped in lost tongues, aka silent, awakening at the ordained order, i.e. Uh, you, you push the keys in the order and they're the quiet keys. 
So now we have darkness that brings the choking heat. Flames render the silence, awakening the hungry beast. Open time's door to beckon prey. Hmm. So this is a weird way of saying, go to the boiler room. This is a weird way of saying, go and check the furnace. Like, I like it. It's cool. <laughs> hmm. I am checking all rooms in the entire place anyway. I think most people would. Is that where we meet Freddy Krueger? Uh, yeah. You know, I've been talking about, like, dreams and, and nightmares and things. Just makes sense. Freddy would show up, you know? Freddy would take one look at Silent Hill and be like, fuck, I can't quip about this mess. I mean... <laughs> Maybe the later games. Ah, the hidden beast. <laughs> All right, now we can descend into the clock tower. I was not expecting the clock tower to go down. It not that interesting? Like the fact that it goes down instead of up is the first subversion of expectations. The second one is then exiting from the same building you just entered. Where am I? Have I been here before? Ah, <gasps> yeah. Remember this being here before. We gotta talk about this real quick. Yo, look at this. Ah, this is at this point in the story. It's the uh, seal of Samael. Yay! <laughs> Samael, sir, not appearing in this game. Uh, we do not. That is not a real thing. That's not a, a real person. Doesn't show up in the series. So this. Right here is inadvertently the reason that everything gets dark instead of foggy. And I'm going to leave that an, an open question. But I also do want to point out that this is slightly different than something that shows up in Silent Hill 3, because people get confused between this one and the Halo of the Sun, which is a thing that shows up in Silent Hill 3 and it's got three circles in it instead of a triangle. It's a different thing. It's a very different thing. <laughs> you know what's interesting about this mark right here? is that it's actually not bad, it's good. <clears throat> it's actually very good. Hmm. This isn't my beautiful school. These aren't my horrible children. Rooms like this are so fucking good. Gosh. Okay. So we've got humanoid dolls hanging from these walls. And if you look behind them, you can see some kind of human shapes in sacks also hanging from the walls. They're very creepy. <clears throat> well, that's not an exit. Oh, I love that you can see a thing behind the fan. <laughs> Hmm. Just chilling out. Just hanging out. Big fan of this. The benefit of a game like this, which has somewhat limited graphics, is that you're able to present things like this. And instead of going, ooh, there's a body behind that fan, it's, oh, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? That looks sus. That looks incredibly sus. I saw him vent. I, I saw it. It's happening right now. Yeah, okay, I deserve those. Yo, Ma, look at this weird cat. There's a weird cat in the yard. Ma, come look at this fucking thing. <laughs> Let me issue with Silent Hill PS2 onwards. The higher fidelity makes them significantly less scary. It can, yeah. There's still moments in three. I think three and four actually are the scariest in the series. They have some intense moments of what the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> yeah, Silent Hill 4 was the scariest to me as well, I think. Oh, I love these walls. These are so good. Is this a door? Hmm. By the way, the girls' room in this school is an interdimensional portal <laughs> that transports you between the first and second floors. I can explain that. I can explain that because it's dream logic. I like this room quite a bit. Hmm. 
<laughs> Guess I'll take that shotgun. I like the IV bags. Why would somebody... Leonard Rhine, the monster lurks. By the way, unrelated to another character named Leonard who shows up in SH3, because that's Leonard Wolf. Different guy. Leonard Ryan is a character that uh, is not a character. Sir not appearing in this game, uh, actually. In the Silent Hill movie, this is a character. They turn this into a, a guy. They make him like a pedophile janitor. And then he winds up like strung up like this later. And you're supposed to go, yay, they killed that pedophile. All right, good job, I, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what the emotional reaction is supposed to be. <laughs> from the from the movie so that's not a that's not a thing in this game that is not at all related to this character what i want to talk about with leonard right here is the fact that what leonard is doing here is being foreshadowing he's supposed to be ratcheting up the tension because what you're looking at is a body strung up you're given a shotgun and you see a bloody message that says the monster lurks what this is supposed to do is be building up your apprehension for going forward and foreshadowing the monster that you're going to be fighting at the end of this area. It's very similar to the newspaper article you find in front of the apartment building in Silent Hill 2, which talks about Walter Sullivan, who says, the red devil killed them. I didn't do it. The red devil killed them. It's after me now. Just before you walk into the apartment building and see Pyramid Head for the first time, the red devil is foreshadowing for that encounter. It's not the same thing. Walter Sullivan didn't literally see Pyramid Head. That's not what happened. But it's it's meant to be anticipation for the player. Can't use the phone. Foreshadowing, it doesn't have to be exactly only setting up the right sort of thing. Exactly, it's setting a tone. Happy birth. Oh no, that's in three. Cheryl! Hmm. Ring, 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 ring. Banana phone. Boop, boop, a doop. Ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong, ding. Banana phone. Okay, so hey, remember that cat scare from earlier? Oh, hey, it's the same thing again. Are they going to do the same scare twice? Why would they do the same scare twice? That would be silly. This camera angle is different, though. Except when you interact with this thing, it just goes... Yeah, get ready for a scare. Nothing inside. Okay, so jump scare warning. For all of y'all who want one of those. Because that so good! <laughs> the cat scare is a setup so that when you get back to the locker, they fake you out with a locker full of blood and then hit you with the jump scare. It's perfect. Perfect setup and payoff. So... This puzzle, I like it, but it's, it has a problem. Hanging key just out of reach. So this puzzle is not telegraphed very well. Nothing special. So I guess, I guess the blood here is your kind of like tell that you're supposed to be looking down there. Okay, and then you can see that the water is going in the hole, and he says maybe I should plug that up now. So, it is, it is signposted once you get here, but it's not very obvious that you should be interacting with the floor on the roof. That said, this ain't a bad puzzle. He went down the drain. So now we gotta go find the output for that drain. Which should be easy enough. 
So, uh, hey, question. Are y'all familiar at all with a little book called Rosemary's Baby? Are y'all familiar at all with a little uh, movie called Poltergeist? Have y'all ever heard of a Stephen King novel by the name of Carrie? Well, that's the important one, I think. I think that's the most important one. Are you kids familiar with a little book called The Bible? <laughs> Harry's a pretty good dad, but you know who was something of a father to us all? <laughs> Spin my chair around. So I just noticed during my playthrough, I missed uh, in the school one of the most important documents in the entire game. So I thought I would go back and cover it real quick just to interrupt your little video here. I'm sorry. When you find the body hanging in the boys bathroom of the school, which has a bloody note written on the wall that says Leonard Ryan the monster lurks, you can then check the library and find a book called The Monster Lurks. That for some reason I totally missed and it's one of the most important documents in the whole game. Let's read it out real quick. Chapter 3, Manifestation of Delusions. This is a phrase that will come up later when Harry says the words like someone's nightmarish delusions come to life in a related manner. Poltergeists are among these negative emotions like fear. Worry or stress manifest into external energy with physical effects. Nightmares have in some cases been shown to trigger them. However, such phenomena do not appear to happen to just anyone. Although it's not clear why, adolescents, especially girls, are prone to such occurrences. So this document is making reference to uh, ESP, psychic powers, uh, nightmares being known to trigger physical effects in the world. This is incredibly relevant to this game and super important for the plot. I uh, don't know why I didn't take a look at it during my playthrough. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> Hearing this, the hunter armed with a bow and arrow said, I will kill the lizard. Upon meeting his opponent, he held back, taunting, Who's afraid of a reptile? At this, the furious lizard hissed, I'll swallow you up in a single bite. See how I'm, how I'm trying to be. I'll tell you. <laughs> Then the huge creature attacked, jaws open wide. <laughs> this was what the man wanted. Calmly drawing his bow, he shot into the lizard's gaping mouth. Effortlessly, the arrow flew, piercing the defenseless maw. And the lizard fell down dead. And then he said, ooh woo. <laughs> this is from an old fairy tale. I remember reading it as a kid. The sexual theory of fairy tales is one of those things the my class says this tells me more about you than it does about fairy tales. I feel that way about anyone's interpretation of monsters in Silent Hill. Not to tie it back into the thing we're doing, but um, a lot of people talking about interpretations of monsters in Silent Hill, I feel like says way more about them than the game Silent Hill. <laughs> my interpretation of Pyramid Head is him right? have dirty apron and funny hat and big sword. Him scary. Right. Right. Left. No, wait, I got it. <laughs> Sorry, it'll just take me a second. <laughs> I completely forget the way you do this in one, like, in three turns. <laughs> Cause I'm silly. Uh... Oh, oh, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> Thank goodness. All right. <laughs> Took me long enough. Jeez. Mmm, that's lit, fam. Do the kids say that? Is that a thing kids say? Hey, check it out, it's burning me! Okay. <laughs> oh, I love how it drools. It just leaves little drippy drips. Alright, not too bad. Very easy.
What was that? Who in the hell was that? Is this a boiler room? What is going on here? Kay Gordon. That was one of the teachers listed. The last clue of the book area with the things. Yeah, the burning and the... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I hear a... A church bell, maybe? Who is ringing the bell? Kay Gordon, that's it. I'll note the address down on the map. So now Kay Gordon's address is going to be on our map. We can head straight there. Isn't that nice? Isn't that so nice? I love that. <laughs> now we can check his house and use that key there. So, okay. There's something I have to say real quick that I don't think the modern developers of those games understand. And that's that the cult is not trying to bring about the nightmare. The nightmare is actually completely fucking up the cult's plans. Dahlia ruined things for everyone. They don't worship the monsters. The paradise that they want to bring about is a different thing unrelated to the nightmare. They are not the same. The cult's god is only ever called God? It is not Samael. That's not who that is. How much of the cult do you actually see in the games? A bit. In Silent Hill 1, we meet with Dahlia and Kaufman, both of who are members of the cult. We get some information about them from here. We get a lot more in 3 when we get to go to one of their churches. We hear conversations with some of their members. We read a lot of their propaganda. And of course, we meet Claudia and Vincent. And then there's a whole other part of the cult in Silent Hill 4. But there is there is quite a bit of lore about them. So the thing that I like about Silent Hill is that every single one of these games has an explanation for why the monsters appear, why the nightmare is happening. In Silent Hill 1, we've got a little girl with psychic powers that cause uh, the nightmare of her torture for seven years to escape the confines of her own head and manifest itself in reality. In Silent Hill 2, an eldritch spiritual power under the town has been corrupted by those events and now draws people with darkness in their hearts to continue to manifest their nightmares. In Silent Hill 3, the cult is using the embryo of their god inside the reincarnation of Alessa to draw the nightmare back out. In Silent Hill 4, uh, a serial killer corrupted by the cult draws people into his dreams in order to murder them in a series of sacrifices that will cause his desires to escape from his head. Darkness in their hearts? Does that mean Silent Hill is part of Kingdom Hearts? Yes, definitely. And then after Silent Hill 4, every single one of those games just goes uh, IDK Haunted Town. Mm. Town haunted. Uh -huh. Why are there monsters? Cause spooky town. Mm. <laughs> it fucking sucks. I hate it. <laughs> no porkin. can't believe the J-Man is Silent Hill canon. Were you ringing that bell? I've been expecting you. Perfect. It was foretold by gyromancy. <gasps> Should we talk about what gyromancy is? What are you talking about? I knew you'd come. Ooh, ooh. You want the girl, right? The girl? You're talking about Cheryl. I see everything. Nothing is to be gained from floundering about at random. Maybe she's not talking about Cheryl. You must follow the path. The path of the hermit concealed by Flauros. What are you talking about? Here, the Flauros, a cage of peace. It can break through the walls of darkness and counteract the wrath of the underworld. These will help you. Make haste to the hospital before it's too late. Wait, don't go yet. I absolutely adore how every time you talk to Dahlia, it sounds like nonsense. <laughs> Everything she says 
sounds like complete and utter bullshit. But on every subsequent playthrough, she makes more and more sense. The things she's talking about, <laughs> like, she's talking over Harry, clearly. But, like, not in a way that's nonsensical. <laughs> There's so many things she says that just lead to more questions. Dahlia absolutely sucks. She's fucking awful. But like, mmm. We should also probably talk about gyromancy. Gyromancy is a form of divination that involves uh, spinning around in circles and getting really dizzy and usually falling the fuck over. <laughs> Often in a circle of words. <laughs> Uh, here we go. I want to talk about demonology real quick. I needed to pull up the source for this guy. Open to Demon Web 101, I guess. <laughs> it's the only place I could find this actual text. Okay, so this is a section of the Ars Goetia about the preliminary invocation to the Primeumaton. Is that how you pronounce that? Is it Primeumaton? Greek for thou who art the first and last, the preliminary invocation prays for the protection of angels and Yahweh in the dangerous work of compelling demonic powers under their command. Oh, this is a big early 2000s website. <laughs> yeah. Is this a real thing? So this is a real thing. This is from Goetic Grimoire Ars Goetia is an actual, <laughs> actual fucking piece of writing from, I believe it's in the Lesser Key of Solomon. And it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of demons. It's a lot about how to basically bend demons to your will. So this is the one I want to talk about, which is Flowros. Should we talk about Flowros real quick? What's the deal with Flowros? Flauros, or Hauris, is a strong great duke of hell, having 36 legions of demons under his rule. He gives true answers of all things past, present, and future, but he must first be commanded to enter a magic triangle, for if not, he lies, deceives the conjurer, and beguiles him in other business. Inside the triangle he answereth truly and gladly speakest on divinity, the creation of the world himself, and other fallen angels. He possesseth this the power to engulf a conjurer's enemies in flames. If a magician requests it, he may be blinded to the temptations of other spirits and devils. He burroweth into the firmament as a humanoid leopard with enormous claws. Only under orders will he transform into a man with fiery eyes and an awful expression. So, Flauros is cool. That's a leopard guy. He totally can't lie if you put him in a triangle. And I want to point out, he has the power to engulf a conjurer's enemy in flames. It's in devils. Are we summoning demons now? Sign me the fuck up, Lucky Bun Owo. Sign me the fuck up. <laughs> so, this is a real thing. I mean, obviously, not a real thing, but uh, this is a thing that, you know, <laughs> from the lesser key of Solomon. So, when she says, use the flower rose, she's given us this triangle, pretty similar to uh, the one that you would bind flower rose into, right? My favorite demon from the Ars Goetia Furfur also lies unless you put him in a triangle of mouth. <laughs> so yeah, one of the things that I like a lot about the first Silent Hill game is that a lot of the supernatural elements in it are borrowed from actual demonology sources. <laughs> oh, wait, I gotta, I gotta find, here it is. Okay, best, best text in the game. Harry, what's, what's this book? What's this book, Harry? Bible. Harry, what you got here? The Bible. <laughs> this is the Bible. Bible. <laughs> All right, where are we going to? The bridge. There it is. Okay. But essentially foretold by gyromancy means I have trapped a demon who told me. No. Dahlia does magic. Gyromancy is one of the forms of magic. Where usually you... Gyromancy is kind of a, kind of a silly thing to talk about because you take letters or words and sort of scatter them around and then spin around until you get very dizzy and associate with some of those uh, words, concepts, or letters <laughs> and wind up using that as, as to predict the future. Okay. <laughs> Where's that key? Shit. 
Kanji. <laughs> By the way, here's the Konami burger. I just have to point it out. It's one of my it's one of my favorites. I love this place. <laughs> Borgar. See, it's it's funny you should say Borgar because it says Konami burger right now. But when the nightmare takes over, it actually changes the spelling on this sign to B E R G E R. I, I'm not sure why. They turned the Konami burger into a pachinko parlor. <gasps> is this the Just Cat store? It is. There it is. Yo, what do they sell here? Is it just cats? I think it's just cats. <laughs> I'll bet you they sell Minmo. <laughs> the officer mustache up there. <laughs> There's a memo on the desk. Coroner Seals called. Officer Gucci is unlikely to be murdered. He apparently died naturally. The medical records show Officer Gucci had no prior symptoms of heart disease. Hmm. Product only available in selected areas of Silent Hill. Raw material is white Claudia, peculiar to the region. D did they mean particular to the region? Hmm. Peculiar is a weird word to use here. It's a peculiar word choice. Manufactured here? Dealer is manufacturer? Hmm. There's a weird subplot in this game regarding a drug derived from White Claudia, and it doesn't really get a mention in any of the other Silent Hill games. <laughs> oh, I love that gunshot noise. It's so ominous. Hold it. <laughs> and then he shoots! Stop. Don't shoot. It's been like 30 seconds. Wait. I'm not here to fight. My name is Harry Mason. I'm in town on vacation. Thank God. Another human being. Do you work here? I'm Dr. Michael Kaufman. I work at this hospital. So maybe you can tell me what's going on. I really can't say. I was taking a nap in the staff room. When I woke up, it was like this. Everyone seems to have disappeared. Mm -hmm. And it's snowing out. This time of year, something's gone seriously wrong. Did you see those monsters? Have you ever seen such aberrations? Ever even heard of such things? You and I both know creatures like that don't exist. Yeah. Have you seen a little girl anywhere? I'm looking for my daughter. She's only seven. Short, black hair. She's missing. I'm sorry. But with all those monsters around, I highly doubt that she's... Sorry. I didn't mean to alarm you. Your wife, she's here with you. She died four years ago. Now it's just mm -hmm. me and my daughter. I see. I'm sorry. Well, I'd better be going. I can't just sit around here doing nothing. The Maudis. Going where? Funnily enough, we'll find out. There's a couple things he says that I find kind of interesting. One of which is that it started snowing. Like, he seems somewhat surprised by it. So it must have started right before we arrived in town, or pretty close to it. And the other thing is, everyone disappeared. Yeah. Love a fresh can of cold, though. Fresh. Original. Cold. Catch one today. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Now introducing Cherry Cold. <laughs> Damn. Somebody ransacked this place. It's not just broken. It looks smashed on purpose. So here's the thing that I love about this game. Here's a fun thing about this game. Is that if you played this game with a walkthrough, you might think, how is anybody supposed to realize that in order to get a like the good plus ending you're supposed to be scooping this shit into a plastic bottle for later use <laughs> now what do we 
have here? It doesn't seem like the most intuitive thing in the world, and how are you supposed to know to do that? The fun thing is, the good minus ending tells you how to use this. When Kaufman shows up in the bad ending of the game, he shows you what you're supposed to use this stuff for. You can infer this because of getting a worse ending. It tells you how to get a better one on your next time through. It's, I think it's kind of interesting. But you don't learn that until you get the good minus ending. Personally, I wanted to play it again because the first time through I was like, I have no idea what the fuck just happened. So it was quite exciting to play through a second time and go, oh, oh that's what that means. Did we somehow think less about multiple endings during the time period when we were more likely to replay games out of lack of others available? Something like that. Like, I think multiple endings for a game like this was kind of expected. I'm not sure, though, because Resident Evil doesn't have multiple endings. I think it's got, like, a scoring system. It does? Okay. Hmm. Well, now we can get floor two and three. So... Here's a thing that you might know already. In Japan, hospitals do not have a fourth floor. Hospitals will go from floor three to floor five as a result of superstition. Same as like hotels not having a 13th floor because the number four is a synonym for the word death. And you don't want to tell patients you're taking them to floor die. <laughs> Right? That's why a lot of hospitals in Japan just don't have a fourth floor. So that's why this is funny. <laughs> when the extra button shows up on this elevator after you examine all the floors. Actually ban the number four in those hospitals? Not like legally. It's just that there's not a hospital that wants to have a fourth floor in it. <laughs> hey Bun, I can't wait for my surgery. Which floor are we going to? The morgue. <laughs> yeah, basically. Ba basically? Yeah. <laughs> Man, I love this game's sound design. It's locked! I love that you can hear the door locking behind you. Ugh, oh, what a good game. Oh, there's my flashlight. It's locked. Hmm. Four is too common a number to be evil. <laughs> it's not like it's evil. VCR. It's all to be usable. I could play some video cassettes on here. So like one of the things that bothers me a little bit about the way that people talk about Silent Hill, none of what's happening in this hospital has to do with Harry. Harry's not here because of his guilt or his sins. This isn't from his brain. These aren't monsters representing his inner demons. He's just the guy. Everybody tries to interpret like the entire series as being like two. <laughs> <laughs> this game is not about Harry's demons, it's about Alessa. Every Silent Hill game is about the person whose nightmare it is. This game is about Alessa. Silent Hill 2 is about James, and to a lesser extent about Eddie and Angela. Silent Hill 3 is about Heather, and by extension, Alessa and Claudia. Silent Hill 4 is about Walter. Like, you're going through the nightmares of the people who the game is about. And I think there's like this cultural understanding of Silent Hill where people think that all of these games are about a haunted town that traps people inside it and manifests monsters based on their inner demons. And that's just not true. <laughs> that's not what this is about. <laughs> that's why it makes me so mad when the trailer for Townfall was like, you're here to be punished. And it's like, fuck you, game. That's not what it's about. That's not even what Silent Hill 2 is about. The town doesn't have a desire to punish James. James has a desire to punish himself. It's trauma. It's not trauma! <laughs> Cat. Silent Hill 
explores a type of horror that nothing else does. And I think it's utterly fascinating. It's something that I adore. If you believe that it's about like multiple dimensions or like a town that's purgatory or something, you're missing the most interesting part about the horror of this game, which is you ever have a nightmare that you couldn't quite explain? You ever have one of those dreams where you're like, wow, why would my brain come up with something like that? You ever have this intrusive thought or like a call of the void that's like, oh, you should jump off that thing. Or, oh, you should stab that person. Or something like that. And you just go, brain, why the fuck would you think that? Why did you, why did you do that? You immediately recognize that there's something in your brain that you didn't want to be there and suddenly just pops up. What if those thoughts started escaping your head into the real world? And that's fucking terrifying <laughs> it's so cool there's no other media out there that does that <laughs> that explores the type of horror that this is you know ocd personified into a living nightmare kind of yeah because like it's kind of horrifying that there are thoughts inside your head that you don't necessarily want to be there. It feels violating. It's invasive. It's disturbing. And like, what if they got out? Is Silent Hill so misunderstandable because neurotypical folks don't understand things like intrusive thoughts? <laughs> oh no. Oh, I love this thing. Look at this fucking guy. <laughs> Silent Hill's aesthetic and its monsters have a very specific kind of horror to them. And that's completely missed by stuff like Silent Hill Ascension, which just has Resident Evil monsters in it. Because Resident Evil monsters are based on blood and gore. So they're based on movies like The Thing and Dawn of the Dead. Like they're, they're taking inspiration from like these kind of like gore fest type films. But Silent Hill is not like that. Its aesthetic isn't about blood and guts and gore. Silent Hill's aesthetic is about this. Here's Masahiro Ito saying exactly what it is the other day, actually. It's about BDSM. That's the aesthetic. <laughs> of the Silent Hill monsters. The difference between like Silent Hill monsters and Resident Evil monsters is that in Resident Evil, you've got like zombies and then sometimes they have like brains and eyeballs and, and tongues and things like that. There's like elements of blood and gore and horror, right? But things like Pyramid Head or the mannequins or especially stuff like the lying bodies are meant to evoke images of constriction, of the idea of pain without drawing blood. There's something like sexual about them in that they have recognizable abs or legs or butts, but they're presented in a way that is somewhat restricted. There's elements of them that are inhuman, but fleshy. And it's hard to talk about and it's hard to describe, right? <laughs> God, I love these little guys. Here, have some blood. <laughs> Plate of Hatter. Surprise, nerds. You thought it was the fly, but it was actually Hellraiser. You thought it was body horror, but it's actually leather fetish kink. <laughs> A little bit. Like, there's, there's elements of it. Like, it's not all oh, kink, okay. but... <laughs> The Grim Reapers list. Lydia Findlay, Trevor F. White. By the way, everybody talks about the sexy nurses. Nobody talks about the doctors in this one. <laughs> so you've noticed that like the doctors and nurses in this area have some sort of weird growth coming out of them. There's something on their backs emerging from their body, I believe. And mind you, all of the monsters in Silent Hill are very open to interpretation, unless you want to say that they're representative of circumcision, in which case you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of them, you can go ahead and provide whatever interpretation you want for these things. They're supposed to be somewhat evocative more than like metaphorical. 
Does that make sense? They're supposed to put an idea in your head and not necessarily be a one-to-one -one representation of a thing. However, I will say that I think the weird growths coming out of these medical professionals are representative of the unwanted growth that Alessa feels inside her own body. They're about her pregnancy. That's my interpretation. Ugh. Let me guess. Circumcised? <laughs> Vaxxed? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the real horror of Silent Hill is pregnancy. Wrap your willy or you go to Silent Hilly. Always use contraception. <laughs> That's the real horror. <laughs> the real horror is the wiki? Oh, big true. A sound is heard from beyond the door. Hmm. The plates in this puzzle are the plate of queen, plate of hatter, plate of turtle, plate of cat. This is the Cheshire cat, the mock turtle, mad hatter, and the queen of hearts. But yeah, the characters from uh, Alice in Wonderland. Whew. Yeah. A body is laid out on the bed. I don't feel like checking this out. <laughs> it's locked. There's four square indentations. So here's the thing that's misleading about this puzzle. Each of these plates represents a character from Alice in Wonderland. Now take everything you know about Alice in Wonderland and then put it in a box and pack it in the attic and forget it's there because that has nothing to do with this puzzle. So it's clouds flowing over a hill, sky on a sunny day, tangerines that are bitter, lucky four-leaf clover, violets in the garden, dandelions along a path, unavoidable sleeping time, liquid flowing from a slashed wrist. And so you take everything you know about Alice in Wonderland and you fucking forget it because it's about the what colors they are. So that one's white, blue, orange, green, violet, yellow, black, red, red gold. The Alice in Wonderland motif on this puzzle isn't really part of the puzzle. Why? Great question. Because these puzzles are leaking out of the mind of essentially a seven-year-old girl. So while she really likes Alice in Wonderland, I don't imagine she'd be very good at coming up with complex puzzles based on the information there within. Does that make sense? How can the puzzles don't actually have to be created by them? No, not consciously. Like, Alessa wasn't making that puzzle on purpose. understand how this shotgun holds six shells but you know what we just go with it time and space are convoluted in silent hill what is time and space in a nightmare precisely hey you get that <laughs> mm -hmm. i love this room <laughs> <laughs> glass break. Glass break. There's a videotape here. What's this? Looks like someone's been here. Alessa. 
examination room key. Oh, we're not gonna have to take an exam, are we? Bed? What's it doing here? Who would... What is a bed doing in a hospital? Alright, first thing we gotta do is go watch that video. I'm not going to the examination room yet. That's weird. To the examination room. Okay, we're doing hugs. All right. Finally, someone else who's okay. Who are you? My name's Lisa Garland. What's yours? Harry Mason. Harry, tell me what's happening here. Where is everybody? I must have gotten knocked out. When I came to, everyone was gone. It's awful. So you don't know anything either. Great. I just don't get it. It's like this is all some kind of bad dream. Yeah, a living nightmare. Let me ask you, have you seen a little girl around here? Short, black hair? Short, black hair, seven <laughs> years old? A seven-year-old girl. I can't say that I have. I was unconscious all this time. I'm sorry. <sighs> That's all right. Do you know anything about all that weird stuff in the basement? No. Why? Is there something down there? You don't know? Don't you work here? We're under strict orders never to enter the basement storeroom. Mm -hmm. So I really don't know. Sus? What did you What's the deal with that Kaufman guy? <sighs> Damn! My head. What's wrong? Harry? Harry. Let me help you. Was I dreaming? You were too late. It's you. Yes, Dahlia Gillespie. Call me Dolly, everyone does. Tell me everything you know. What's going on? Darkness. Hearts. Light darkness. Strength must overcome petty desire. Childish sleep talk. Okay, can we talk about this line real quick? You know how I said how Dahlia's shit sounds like nonsense? How Dahlia sounds like just wild gibberish? <laughs> this line sounds like such crap the first time you play this game. What does this mean? Strength must overcome petty desire. Childish sleep talk. What the fuck? Uh, and once you know what's going on, it kind of makes sense, though, actually. What is childish sleep talk, if not dreams? Nightmares. The nightmare of a child. Strength must overcome. Hmm. Come. <laughs> I knew this day would come. What are you talking about? I don't understand a word of this. Believe the evidence of your eyes. The other church in this town, that is your destination. This is beyond my abilities. Only you can stop it now. Have you not seen the crest marked on the ground all over town? So that's what I saw in the schoolyard. This is important. What does it mean? It is the mark of Samael. Don't let it be completed. Hey, wait! Hmm. So, here's where she mentions the Mark of Samael. Okay. That is not the name of the cult's god. The cult's god is called God, capital G. That's it. Okay. It's not Samael. She's bullshitting. It's going to turn out that she's lying to you here. The mark on the ground is not actually the Mark of Samael. Here's the thing. She says that there's something called the Mark of Samael. We find out later in this game, much later, that they're actually called the Seal of Metrotron in two of the endings. I believe it's Metatron in the other two. It's the Seal of Metrotron is, is what it is in, I guess, Silent Hill canon, I believe. However, there is a angel named Samael 
And there's one called Metatron in, I believe, Kabbalistic mythology. I believe those are from the Kabbalah. Metatron is Enoch, I think. Okay. In some of the writings on these, there are implications that Samael is an aspect of Metatron that they are in some way related, connected, or the same being. It's a little bit vague. It depends on the translation. It depends on the, the um, documents you're looking at. But in certain mythologies, these are implied to be related entities. So when she says something like the mark of Samael and says, and they're actually the seal of Metatron, what she's telling you is not strictly a lie that these, in some mythologies, could be understood to be the same thing. Neither of these are the cult's god, by the way. She's fooling you. She's playing Harry for a fool. They played us like a damn fiddle! I'm outies. All right, one thing we want to do is look at this key, because looking at it, I believe that marks the location on our map. It does. There it is. It's right there. Now we go to the antique shop. When you lack critical information, she can just play Harry like that. <laughs> Streamer knows critical information. Dahlia cannot backseat. <laughs> Dahlia's gaslight gatekeep girl bossing. She's putting misinformation on the wiki. <laughs> There's a trace on the floor that somebody moved the cabinet. Do you want to push the cabinet? What's this? Harry! Sybil? Oh, I'm glad you're okay. I shouldn't have left you. Things are worse than I thought. I couldn't get out. All the roads out of town are blocked. Cars have completely stopped running. Hmm. The phones and radios are still out too. What about my daughter? Did you see her? I did see a girl. Was it Cheryl? I only caught a glimpse of her through the fog. I went after her, but she vanished. I don't know about your daughter, but... And you just let her go? Where was it? On Bachman Road. She was <clears> heading <throat> towards the lake. Now don't get excited. It wasn't like she ran off exactly. There was no place for her to go. The road has been obliterated. What? So then Cheryl... It was like she was walking on thin air. What about you? Anything? Yeah. I met this bizarre woman. <laughs> She's a real weirdo, yeah. She said something about the town being really? devoured by darkness. Gibberish like that. She said something about uh, this world being connected, tied to the darkness. And then she said, one who knows nothing can understand nothing. And then Kyrie and Riku disappeared into the tree. And then, <laughs> and then I met Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me let me cook. <laughs> it's Harry. They put bugs in him. They put bugs in him. What? Okay, okay. This scene right here, I think, explains a lot of the mechanics of this universe in a better way than a lot of the sequels will. We get a lot of information here that should should answer the question: Where is everybody else in this town? Why is this town so empty? Darkness devouring the town. Must be on drugs. <laughs> they sell them that's not the explanation. She's Drug probably crunked out of her mind. But maybe that's the darkness she was talking about. One drop of fentanyl could kill seven millions, Harry. <laughs> what's this? Maybe there's something back there. Let's have a look. Wait, we don't know what's back there. I'd better check it out first. Harry, are you stupid? <laughs> You may be a trained police officer, but I have a penis, so I should probably go first. You kidding me? I'm a cop. I should go. Yes, thank you, Sybil. No, I'm going. Oh my god. All right. I'll cover you from here. <laughs> be careful. Harry just wisely does not trust the police. Okay, fair. Sybil, do you know anything about, well, like some other world? It's like some kind of bad dream. All like a nightmare? What are you talking about? I'm not quite sure. I try to make sense of it, but then my mind goes blank. Everything's dark there, and I hear sirens in the distance. I met this nurse, Lisa. It's like I was there, but not really. Mm-hmm. It's all a blur, like some kind of hallucination. 
you know? Okay, so I want to point out very specifically that Harry says that he was there, but not really when he was talking to Lisa. That's important. One. Two, I think what a lot of people take away from this game is the siren. They're like, oh, that's that means the Silent Hill is coming. That means the nightmare is happening. This is what the movie does. There's like the big siren and then the, it turns into the nightmare or whatever. But that's not the important part of this. The important thing is that it turns dark. It fades to black. There is this darkness that's enveloping things. It's like falling asleep. <laughs> It's supposed to be like sleep because it's when the nightmare is enveloping things. It's why there's that fade to black. It's not because they couldn't animate the world turning into a nightmare. It's because they wanted to create this aspect of sleep and then Harry waking up. So like he wakes up in the diner in the beginning of the game. He wakes up in the hospital, like on the bed, stuff like that. They do animate it later in the game, exactly. But like, it fades to black for a reason, and it's because it's supposed to be a transition into a nightmare. Is different in every Silent Hill game. Silent Hill 2 has a much more gradual change into its nightmare. It's sort of enveloping everything, but it also involves descending into the nightmare. In Silent Hill 3, it's accompanied by pain, headaches. Usually there's like blood involved. It's like Heather is giving birth to the nightmare. And in Silent Hill 4, you know what? Silent Hill 4 is really subtle. It's about a guy who thinks the apartment room you're in is his mother and you exit it through this big long hole that you then, you know, you, you exit out of the hole into the nightmare. It's like you're being circumcised into it. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about, Harry. I was just wondering. Never mind. Sybil's not seen the nightmare. Harry, you're tired. Yeah, maybe. There is an explanation for that, and it's way simpler than you're thinking. <laughs> What's this? Some kind of altar. Never seen anything like this before. Maybe this is the other church. Small one-hand axe. Moderately effective as a weapon. What kind of powder is left in the chalice? Hmm. Maybe it's goofballs. <gasps> what the? Oh. Harry? Are you okay? Harry. <gasps> Harry's gone. Where am I? You were having a bad dream. Was I? Hey, you don't look too good. Are you okay? I'm fine. Nothing you need to worry about. Well, if you're sure. Lisa, do you know a woman named Dahlia Gillespie? Oh yeah, that crazy Gillespie lady. Crazy old Gillespie. She was in here raving. Whoa, slow down, Gillespie. But I heard her kid died in a fire, and supposedly she's been crazy ever since. Well, she says the town is being devoured by the darkness. Do you have any idea what she's talking about? The town devoured by the darkness. Yes, I think I do. Before this place was turned into a resort, the townspeople here were on the quiet side. Everybody followed some kind of queer religion. Weird occult stuff. Black magic, that kind of thing. As young people moved away, the people figured they'd been summoned by the gods. Evidently, things like that used to happen around here all the time. Would any of y'all like to convert to my queer religion? <laughs> queer religion? Signed USA. <laughs> Before the resort, there really wasn't anything else out here. Everyone was so flipped out, gotta blame it on something. Everybody was hopped up on goofballs. <laughs> and a lot of new people came in and everybody clammed up about it. A cult. Last time I heard anything about it was, gosh, years ago, when several people connected with developing the town died in accidents. Mm. People said it was a curse. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I'll shut up. Maybe like that guy that we found a note from in the police station. Was that another dream? Did I pass out again?
but maybe this is all just going on in my head. I could have had a car accident. Now I'm lying unconscious in a hospital bed. I don't know what's real anymore. Sybil said Cheryl was heading towards the lake. The road to the lake is blocked. Are there any other roads? Lisa would probably know. And here we got another one of those, uh seal of samuels see what i mean about the aesthetic of this game not being like blood and guts and gore on their monsters but being like a bdsm type stuff all right so let me explain what happened there real quick because it's a little bit weird that harry disappeared that sybil didn't see him and then he just had a conversation with lisa in the hospital before waking up in this it's like a badly maintained sex dungeon in new jersey exactly like that i'm sure that's where they got the inspiration for this game <laughs> here used fast travel no specifically no the later silent hill games have people teleporting around all over the place like whenever they enter or exit the the nightmare they're like fucking uh, uh, teleporting around to wherever the plot needs them to be and i don't like it <laughs> I don't like it. This game is actually pretty easy to understand because what happened is that Harry was pulled into the nightmare. The nightmare can overtake reality. It can manifest things out of it, but it can also pull people into it. His conversations with Lisa when he's like, it felt like I was there, but I was not really there, are taking place inside Alessa's dream. They are the only parts of this game that don't take place in the real world. And they go a ways towards explaining what may have happened to the other people who live in this town. When Kaufman says everybody was gone, it's possible that when the nightmare is overtaking this place, it's just plucking people out and it's bringing them into the nightmare and it's putting them back where they belong afterward. What is happening when it gets pushed back outside? That is the nightmare manifesting in the real world. It's escaping Alessa's head. And the reason for that is the mark of Samael. But we'll find out more about that later because it's not actually the mark that's causing it. It's that Alessa needs to astral project herself into an area to create those marks. And her manifesting there also brings her nightmares, her intrusive thoughts, the things in her brain that she's trying to stop get drawn out with her. Oh, and the reason that um, Sybil has not seen the nightmare is because uh, it hasn't manifested where she is. Vestal. Yo, I love Gigastore's Vestal. Not Virgin. <laughs> As in the Vestal Virgins. It, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's clearly the Virgin logo, but it's Vestal. It's cute. It's fun. <laughs> I do like that while this mall is very tiny it's a very small part of this game they do revisit the idea of a mall in silent hill 3 screens after the clip of Cheryl, there is a couple of frames of Alessa. Kind of hard to see, but there are there are a couple frames of Alessa on these TVs. The museum water. <laughs> museum water! <laughs> hey, you guys, we need to get some water. <laughs> It, it might have said watch. The museum watch? <laughs> that would make more sense. Anyway, the idea of being plucked out of reality and brought into the dream is the explanation that I kind of go to for why there are some people missing from this game. I mean, it is a very small ghost town. This town has a population of probably like 30 people, but Kaufman says people have gone missing. In Silent Hill 3, we wind up seeing like an entire mall full of people just kind of kind of disappear or change. One of the characters wants to draw doubt on that, telling you that you're seeing people as monsters and then saying, just kidding. In Silent Hill 4, we see for a fact that people can enter dreams. <laughs> So people can enter dreams like they're places, which is a concept that some Lovecraft stories actually deal with. People think Lovecraft was only doing like eldritch horror stuff, but that's not true. 
There's also like the dream realms and things like that. But it's an interesting concept. I think Stephen King deals with some of that too. Oh, I love this. You could see like the larvas, the buggos on that thing. I'm gonna say corpse. What a good setup. Fight them buggos. I also like how it bleeds purple. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up this real quick. I missed a rifle in my first playthrough. I, if I had a dime for every time that happened, literally double my income. I was just a baby. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, bye. Yeah, by the way, there's a hunting rifle over here. A lot of people miss it, <laughs> which is a shame because it's really useful for the final boss if you don't want to spend all your ammo. Welcome to the Silent Hill Wind Farm. <laughs> Alright, here it is. The Konami Berger. B E R G R. Bergers. <laughs> is this where we found Lisa? Harry! Glad you're okay. Oh, thank God you came back. I was scared to be here all alone. I'm here now. I was worried too. I'm real happy to see you. Lisa, can you tell me how to get to the lake? The lake? You take Bachman Road. The road's blocked. Well, that's the only way out there. Are you sure? There's gotta be another way. Wait! I just remembered something! She's excited now. There's a waterworks over by my old elementary school. It's been abandoned for years. There's an underground tunnel out there used for inspections or something. I remember hearing it runs all the way to the lake. Really? You think I can get to the lake from there? I've never been down in there myself, so I'm not positive. Besides, it's all fenced off to keep people out. If there's a chance, I've got to try. Harry, don't go! I don't want to be alone. It's so scary, I can't stand it. How about coming with me? This may not be the safest place in the world either. I can't promise you anything, but I'll do my best to protect you. No. Somehow I feel I'm not supposed to leave this place. Hmm. Oh, Harry. I'm so scared. I'm cold. Look, just wait here a little longer. I'll be back as soon as I find my daughter. Harry? the hunting rifle for this. What a cute moth. So this is actually, I don't know if you remember, but we fought this caterpillar earlier in the mall. It has become a big old moth. She just wants her lamp, for God's sakes. <laughs> Let her have her lamp. <laughs> Getting vibes of like, Metal Gear Solid 1 helicopter boss fight up here. <laughs> Explain the moth. Why is moth? We actually find out a little bit later. Um, I will point it out, but when we see Alessa's room, she has a uh, extensive bug collection, including pinned butterflies. That's the best explanation you're gonna get. <laughs> But also, if you think about it in terms of, like, metaphor, I suppose, Alessa's being used as, like, a way to grow the cult's god, right? So she's something like a cocoon that it's going to emerge out of. If you wanted to read into it that way, you probably could.
block is worn out. I may be able to break it if I hit it hard. I like this. This is this is something this game does like once or twice and never again. No, you don't need to get a key. You can actually just fucking bust it. <laughs> This sewer section is one of the parts of the game that I understand the least about. <laughs> like, I can understand why creatures in the sewers is scary to like, a little girl like Alessa. I can understand that they probably included the sewers as a reference to Stephen King's It. Some of the stuff, like sewers and bugs, are just general fears we all share. Yeah, and like the dogs too. Like mo most people aren't necessarily just afraid of dogs generally, but like angry dogs that try to attack you are just generally scary. Yeah. <laughs> Good old PS1 water. Look at them animated pixels. I love that. <laughs> Creepy things on the ceiling. <laughs> Welcome to Joe's apartment. It's our apartment too. <laughs> I am Audi 5000. <laughs> uh. Accidentally ran into a corner over here. <laughs> Annie's bar, and we can go in it. Kaufman, what were you doing in here? I'm sorry, did I interrupt? <laughs> did I interrupt something? Are you okay? Yeah, I guess so. But I'm beat. I thought I was a goner there. So how'd it go? Did you find a way out? No, not yet. How about you? Zip. Nada. <laughs> this craziness can't go on forever. A military rescue squad should be here any time now. If they come through the town, we're home free. I hope so. I better get going. Do you know a girl called Alessa? No. <laughs> nope. See ya. <laughs> Funk tour. Ladies! Kaufman must have dropped this. Looks like it's full of stuff. Zero, four, seven, three. He bought sweat and paper. No, I'm sorry, that's something else. <laughs> so here's an interesting, interesting thing, I think, in this game. So just next to Old Silent Hill up there is where we entered this area. And if you head straight down Bachman across Sandford, then you can get to Lakeside, which is our objective. We're heading to the lighthouse right now. So you could just run straight there if you want. There's a couple other buildings you could enter here that will get you the good ending. If you just run straight through to the lighthouse, you'll get the bad ending. In order to get the good ending, you have to hop in here and save Kaufman and then track down where his key goes and do a little side quest over here. This is, this is a side quest. It's totally optional. But this will get you a good ending. I've seen people run straight there on first runs. Exactly. I think that the bad minus ending is the first one you should get if you play this game. Because generally people are fucking scared when it's dark out and you run straight to the lighthouse because that's your objective. I just want to get there. On your second playthrough, you might be a little more confident exploring around here and finding out where Kaufman is. But I don't know how you'd try to figure out that you need to use a plastic bottle to pick up the red stuff in Kaufman's office and then use it on a character later unless you've seen the good minus ending. It's supposed to be a hint, albeit not a great one. Yes! <laughs> it's not the best one, but I think this game is meant to be played a couple of times to get different endings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I love Fetty X. <laughs> he came by. I handed over the package that the woman left here. September 12th. He showed up at Norman's, too. Don't want to be involved with the likes of them anymore, but getting creeped out even more than before. Thought of leaving town, but I'm afraid what will happen if I do. Hmm, this sounds like a drug deal. Norman's grand opening. Three loaves of bread, two cartons of milk, two dozen eggs. Rear entrance code 0886. What is this? Droogs? None of the other Silent Hill games mention this drugs subplot here. There's like this little side story about drugs in Silent Hill. The, the reason that it's in here is because Twin Peaks is really good. They really like Twin Peaks. <laughs> Twin Peaks has an extended plotline about cocaine smuggling. No, I'm serious though. No, I'm actually serious. <laughs> like for real. That's why it's here. Twin Peaks was really popular in Japan for a while. You can see where like Silent Hill gets it from, for real. Is this not just the double R diner from Twin Peaks? Look at this. <laughs> like it used to be that stuff like Twin Peaks would take like a year or two to show up over there. Nobody inside. Crack is too small to reach in. It's locked. There we go. Got it. <laughs> Newspaper. I really like Harry's one word descriptions of things. They're very different than the stuff Heather will say in like SH3, where he just looks at something and points at it and goes, newspaper or like Bible. It's great. It's the same date as the one in the hospital. Investigation stalled, PTV dealers still at large, suspicious deaths continue. Like the anti-drug mayor, a narcotics officer dies of a sudden heart failure of unknown origin. Hmm. The poster is on the wall. Don't look at it now, though. Don't look at that now. You might get the b the bad ending. You might get the pervert ending if Harry looks at the poster too long. <laughs> How dumb would it be if they had a game where, like, it was like this, but, like, if you looked at stuff, it would influence your ending? And then there's, like, an alcoholic ending and then, like, the, the pervert ending, depending on what you look at. <laughs> September 10th. Took package. Told to sit on it a while. Don't want to get involved, but can't disobey. Probably linked to the death of the mayors and others. Now we can use this magnet to get the motorcycle key. All right, now we can use the key on the motorcycle. That's weird. The dust is wiped away around the gas tank cap. Is literally in Deadly Premonition. You know why? Because this is literally Twin Peaks. <laughs> it's like the busted vial I found in the de director's office at the hospital. It's like the vial from the director's office. That's an important line. Give me that. What is this? That's none of your business. Instead of messing with that, how about coming up with a way to get out of here? Hmm. You shouldn't be hanging around here goofing off. What do you think you're doing? You want to get yourself killed? Get out of here. Okay, take it easy. Unless you want to die, keep your mind on business. Got it? He's acting real sussy. <laughs> that guy's got to be involved in the local drug racket. Man, was he pissed. And in such a rush, too. That was probably dope in the bottle. Anyway, better let him do as he pleases. It's more than my life at stake. Guess I wasted my time. Better hurry. I'm worried about Cheryl. <laughs> What's this? Oh. Rather than shifting from reality to a nightmare, this is more like reality becoming a nightmare. I don't like this feeling, like something bad will happen. No doubt, something terrible is going on.
<clears throat> Sybil. Harry. How did you get back here? I followed the sewer. Were you the one who cut the fence? Yeah. I'm glad you made it. I was worried about you. You were worried? Where did you disappear to? Never mind. I want to know what's going on here. What is with this town? This may sound really off the wall, but listen to me. I haven't gone crazy, and I'm not fooling around. At first, I thought I was losing my mind, but now I know I'm not. It's not me. This whole town, it's being invaded by the other world, by a world of someone's nightmarish delusions come to life. Little by little, the invasion is spreading, trying to swallow up everything in darkness. I think I'm finally beginning to understand what that lady was talking about. Harry, hold on a minute. I don't get it. Look, I don't understand it all myself. I guess I can't explain it. Well, what's making this happen? I don't know that either. So, let me point out a couple things real quick. I'm just going to pause this really quick, really quick here. When Harry says it's being invaded by the other world, he's talking about the town, right? But he's not talking about some other dimension. He's talking about literally the town in the real world is being invaded by the other world. Harry seems to come up with the name the other world, but this has references to things like Irish folklore also refers to an other world. Although there are many other worlds. They're usually like the worlds of the Fae where they are just other worlds, literally. Um, there's not just an other world. There are other worlds, right? Is Harry Irish? I don't know. I don't think so. Harry Mason? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. But yeah, this is, it's not just Irish folklore. There's, there's other mythologies that have an idea of like an other world, the, the realm of uh, the supernatural. So I think that's what he's referring to is a dreamlike realm of supernatural qualities. And this was translated as other world, which mm, sure. Okay, that makes sense. Crucially here, the cult did not come up with the name Otherworld. It is not like a concept in the cult or their mythology. This is a thing that just Harry came up with, one. And two, he literally says a world of someone's nightmarish delusions come to life. They're just spelling it out. It's just a nightmare invading reality. It's, it's becoming real. <laughs> Harry's a writer, so I suppose he could come up with a name like this. That's what I'm guessing. That makes a lot of sense. Sure. Mm -hmm. But I do know Cheryl is there. There? Under whoever created this darkness. He's Cheryl's so right and he doesn't even know it. Harry, this whole thing's been a major blow to you. You need to rest. Sybil, I... Well, well, well. Dahlia Gillespie. Was it not as I said? I see it all now. Yes, everything. I do love her huge ass time. The land. I knew this day would come. And what's more, the task is almost finished. There's only two left. To seal this town to the abyss, the mark of Samael. When it is completed, all is lost. Even in daytime, darkness will cover the sun. The dead will walk and martyrs will burn in the fires of hell. Everyone will die. So what am I supposed to do? I've got to save Cheryl. It is simple. Stop the demon. The demon, the demon taking that child's form. Stop it before your daughter becomes a sacrifice. Before it is too late. Stop it! Stop it! What do I do? Go to the lighthouse on the lake and to the center of the amusement park. Make haste. You are the only hope. Look, Harry, I really don't get what's going on. <laughs> but if there's a chance we can save your daughter, I'm in. I'll check out the amusement park. You go to the lighthouse. All right. Wait, so why do you get to go on the Ferris wheel and I'm just going to the stupid lighthouse? Ah, oh, forget it. <laughs> You will need to use it. Use what? The Flowers. Only with that can you stop it. What about Sybil? See ya. <laughs> Man, with characters like Sybil, I can't see those tight-fitting black nitrile gloves and not think, yeah, whoo, that's a dom right there. <laughs> anyway, so, oh god. <laughs> they could also be a tattoo artist. Or both. There is overlap there. I don't know. <laughs> They're probably black leather bike gloves, yes. She is a bike cop. 
Harry doesn't actually know anything. A very important plot point in this game is that Harry doesn't know shit. Yes, but he can feel it. The other world, uh, being a realm of dreams, is very vibes based. Um, so like he knows what it feels like and he expresses several times that it feels like having a dream without going to sleep. Like there's a there's that kind of quality to it. And I think that's what he's trying to express. And even in dreams, there are certain things that like you know without knowing. It's a somewhat common conception that you aren't able to read anything in dreams. That if you pick up a piece of paper and you're supposed to be able to read it, you just have the information that's in it. Sometimes when you have a dream, you'll just know that something is true without anybody telling you. <laughs> that's kind of the way that dream logic just sort of works. Sometimes if you need to know something, you will just know it. <laughs> and I think that is happening sometimes in this game. But the most horrifying aspect to me is the idea that you can't control your dreams, really. You are not having conscious input into what you're dreaming. Things that you dream and the people that are in them and what you do with those people and in those dreams is not always conscious. It's sometimes just really bizarre subconscious impulses and you wake up and you go, why did that happen? Why did I think think that. It's almost scary that you find out that there are those thoughts inside your head. I have, and this is going to be weird and a little personal, so I'm sorry for expressing this. I would have this reoccurring nightmare where I got into a fight with someone and they grabbed me in a way that I could bite their finger to make them stop. And it always ended with the finger coming off in my mouth. And that thought was so horrifying that I would often wake up and I would never do that. I would not want to do that. The idea is repellent and horrifying, but somehow it got into my brain and I don't know how or why. And it scares the fuck out of me. <laughs> it's really uncomfy. And the idea in these games that those thoughts could be manifest outside of your own head is really scary. <laughs> Those are the thoughts we don't want to dwell on. It's like your intrusive thoughts escaping your head and you have no control over it. Or in the case of this game, somebody else's intrusive thoughts that you now have to live through. So, if you take nothing else away from this, it's that even my subconscious is entirely vor centric <laughs> That's not like that. That's a different thing. <laughs> I had some dream like a while back where I revisited my first job, which was a fast food joint. It was White Castle. Like I walked into a White Castle to order food and they were really understaffed. And for some reason I had to jump behind the counter to help them make burgers. And I don't know why, <laughs> but I, ha I had to do it. They needed me. <laughs> and it was like, that's not, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Like, what are you doing, Dream? <laughs> I do not work there. I do not want to work there. It's weird how stressful situations can mess with your mind years later. I think we're all traumatized from uh, having a job. I feel like we've all been traumatized from being forced into labor. <laughs> Just like Alessa. <laughs> there she is. Wait. Damn, I was too late. This is one of the weirdest environments in the game to me. This is supposed to be the top of a lighthouse. It's a little bit Dark Souls 2. You know, when you get to the Iron Keep and you're just like, that doesn't make sense for this to be up here. DS2 is intentionally designed to be very dreamlike. Yes, and it's one of the things I love about it. I really like that. God, and I love this camera angle. It's so good they use it twice. And you know what? It works both times, back to back right here. <laughs> like this descent into darkness is, oh, it's so good. Sybil hasn't come back. That creep's sure to show up at the amusement park pretty soon. Oh, Let yeah. me be on time. Mm hmm. What do I want to say about Silent Hill before we get to the end of this thing? Because we're pretty close. Hello? Hi there. Hmm. I think basically the point that I want to get across is what is the other world 
in Silent Hill. And I think they perfectly adequately explain it in this game when Harry says it is a world of someone's nightmarish delusions come to life. It is someone's nightmare of Silent Hill. And that's just kind of cool. Oh man. I just love <laughs> oh. the weird occult symbols on everything. The way the dogs look different now, like they're different now. They've got different heads now. The cover has been removed. Could still have gotten to the amusement park from here. <laughs> Jeez, the sound design in this game. Sybil, no! Man, look at that big old, big old mark of Samael. The noises down here are so good. They don't need a lot of music. They just need the right music. Ah! Ooh, look at you little mumblers. Look at, look at the, oh, come, it, oh, it's so cool. I love this tunnel too, it's so cool. And then you start getting the amusement park bits. Oh God. <laughs> like it's transitioning from one location to another. Oh my God. Oh, little squeaky guys. Oh, I love them. They just trip and fall over. <laughs> One kid trying to get on the ride. Isn't it interesting that these little claw hands usually show up in the amusement park and the school? It's like the middle school and an amusement park. And there's one of them in the sewer. I think that's interesting. It's a little, it's a little sad. <laughs> Oh no, she's gone full Kaufman. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I think we have to damage her first. What we want to do is use this unknown liquid. How do we know to use that? <laughs> oh geez, that does so much damage. She will just slap the shit out of you. Now I think, I think we can use it now. Ooh. Ooh. Wake up. Snap out of it. Sybil. Harry. What happened? Shh. Don't talk. I'll take care of you. Harry. Why did they take your daughter? Why her? I'm not sure myself. But you know, Cheryl isn't my biological daughter. I actually haven't told her yet. God, the lighting in this scene is so good. She probably already knows anyway, though. We found her abandoned on the side of the highway. Nobody knew where she came from. We didn't have any kids of her own. My wife was sick, and it didn't look like she was getting any better. So we took Cheryl in. So in that case... There might be some connection between Cheryl and this town. So what do you do now? Cheryl is my daughter. I will save her no matter what. Let's go, Harry. Harry literally goes, she's not my biological daughter. She's my real daughter. Fuck yeah. Fuck yes. What a good dad. Oh my god. <laughs> Harry's one of those characters that like really blows a hole in people who think that People get trapped in Silent Hill because, like, they feel guilt or shame or because the town is punishing them or some shit. And it's like, Harry Mason is perfect. Look at this fucking cinnamon roll. <laughs> Fuck you that you think he's in Silent Hill because he's being punished or some shit. <laughs> Yeah, like three of four of the original protagonists have done nothing wrong. Harry is free of sin. <laughs> God, I love this scene so much. I figured you'd show. Hold it right there. I don't know who you are, or what you're trying to do, and I don't care. 
just one thing. Let Cheryl go. That's all I ask. What? God, Alessa's so cool. Damn. Magic. What is this? Cheryl, give me back my daughter. We meet at last, Alessa. Thalia Gillespie? Where's Cheryl? Where is she? Alessa, this is the end of your little game. Mama? Huh? Could she be... You've been a ghastly little pest, haven't you, Alessa? I was careless, thinking you couldn't escape from our spell. But Mommy didn't know how much you'd grow. That's why I couldn't catch you all by myself. But what a pity, yes? Now you're half indebted to this man for his help. Hey, what are you talking about? Alessa, my dear little girl, there is one thing left I need you to do for me. No! Get away from me! Bad girl. Everything is ready. What's going on here? Ah! Lisa, what happened? Where's Alessa and Dahlia? Harry, listen. Something you said before has been bothering me. I just can't get it out of my head. What is it, Lisa? So I went to look in the basement, even though I was scared as hell. Like you said, there were these creepy rooms, but nothing really unusual down there. But while I was down there, I got this weird feeling, like I'd been there before, like something happened there. But I can't quite remember somehow. What was it? Harry, help me. I'm so scared. I can't take this. It's only a temporary thing. You're in shock from when you were knocked out. Don't fret about it. You'll remember after a while. No. You don't understand. You really don't, Harry. <laughs> Lisa, damn, what's that? That sound? It's coming from the basement. Hmm. So like I said before, in these scenes when Harry is pulled into this version of the hospital, it happens twice in this location and when we're in the antique store. These are Harry being pulled out of reality and into a world of someone's nightmarish delusions come to life. And that's really important for understanding what the fuck is going on with Lisa. Like if you don't get that part, then Lisa's gonna be a little bit confusing. <laughs> How good is the cinematography in this game, huh? Like, oh my god. They were really experimental with what they were doing. What happened in this town? What could be making things like this? I have a feeling if I take the elevator down, I'll find it. Is this done on the same engine as Metal Gear Solid? That's a great question. We may never know. It's a Konami game from around the same time period, so it's very possible they shared some code, but it's from an era of games where you made a new engine for every game. There were some games that were like based on others and you would reuse code all over the place, obviously. But like the idea of having a bespoke engine that you would create a whole game in this was pretty early for that kind of thing that started to become more common around the ps2 era and more popularized in the ps3 360 era yeah unless you were like quake or half-life or something there was like a there was the quake engine and the source engine and, and stuff like that but yeah the ps2 era was largely the same where you made a new engine every time unless you're making like a sequel and then you usually start with the same assets and then you build off of it so a lot of the time yeah you would throw away almost everything <laughs> except for code you know i would hesitate to say this is the same engine as metal gear solid because I don't think that term would apply, but it might have shared some of the same code base as it. I'm just not sure. And the only way to find out is talk to people who worked on it. Yeah, documentation was 
relatively uncommon because usually when you finished a game and released it, uh, you would then throw away all of your source files because you don't need them anymore. You need hard drive space and you'd toss them all away. Silent Hill lacked so much documentation that there was never a story bible. Like there was never a series document that tells the story of these games, which leads to a lot of problems. <laughs> Hmm, bird cage is locked. Yeah, there's a key in this faucet, but I can't get it out no matter how much I pull. So here's an interesting thing. You're designing a video game. It's a little bit of an adventure. You've got an area where people need to run around and grab keys, right? One of the easiest ways to do this sort of thing is to just hide the keys around in different rooms, have the player run around and grab them. That's like the basic. You want to make it slightly more complicated. What you do is you put the key into a situation where you need an item to get the key. So for instance, you could put it in a locked box, have them grab a key, come back, open the box, right? Did they do that? Yes. Yes, they did. This th this is a box containing a key that you need a key to get, right? So you, you've got an item that you need to open a thing to get the key to make progress. You gotta go and grab the keys. Okay. What I find interesting and a little bit unique here is that all of these keys, instead of being in simply a container, they are trapped. So the flapping of the wings sound in this room, the fact that this key is locked into a cage, like a bird cage where you have like a living thing, or like um, where you would have flowing water, instead there is a key jammed in the faucet. Like they've turned this game mechanic into something that feels like instead of collecting keys, you have to free them from their imprisonment. The keys are in bondage. If I may quote my immortal, Wolfamort has him bondage. <laughs> Truly a masterpiece of literature. Also, hey, check this out. Do you remember when we went into the mall, there's that television that's displaying static and then it shows Cheryl with flashes of Alessa and then it starts showing repeating symbols? Hey, the symbols are back and now we get to see what they are. <laughs> Just a wall. I love that they knew you would check it. I love that they were like, oh, they're gonna check that wall. <laughs> Go home. Thief. Drop dead. Hmm. Key of Ophiel. Is it interesting to y'all? The environment of this hospital, the environment of nowhere at least, uh, which is the name of this area, is places that are made from the memories of Alessa, right? So we're inside Alessa's dream right now and it's combining the places that she knows. It's quite interesting to me that she has decorated the world of her dreams, whether consciously or not, with these somewhat biblical names. It just shows how much Alessa actually knows about the cult and its rituals and its mythology. Like, that's a lot more than you'd expect from a 14-year-old. <laughs> uh, this is another puzzle. Remember in the hospital, there is a puzzle where you collect a bunch of plates, which are all named after characters from Alice in Wonderland. That has nothing to do with the puzzle. It's all about the colors of the plates. This one's also a great misdirection because if crab is 10 and ram is four, you're going to start to think, oh my God, wait a minute. These are all astrological signs. So what would Taurus be? or Sagittarius, or Gemini. So that's what you should be thinking about. Oh my gosh, how do the astrological signs fit in with the numbers here? And then maybe there's a pattern where you can fit like, okay, Cancer, number 10, which month would that be? No, that doesn't matter, no. It is the number of limbs. See, Ram has four. 
Fim has zero. So many players think this is a Zodiac Constellation puzzle. Exactly. But that's the misdirection. That's why I kind of like it. I kind of like this puzzle because it makes you overthink it. Because it's so simple. But the fact that they're using images from astrology makes you think too hard about the puzzle when you're supposed to just go, oh, two arms and four legs. Oh, that's six. <laughs> yeah, so this would be the bull. Taurus, four legs. Two people, that's four arms and four legs together. Uh, that's eight. It's just, it's a really clever puzzle because it's way, way easier than it implies. Oh, a stone of time. Good thing Harry knows what that is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Large stone with a clock face design on pillar with astrology chart hanging from it. Harry, where are you seeing that? I don't know if I'm seeing that. Names engraved on a lithograph, the Grim Reaper's List. Yes, the head count is set, young and old lined up in order of age. Then the pathway opens, awaiting them the frenzied uproar, the feast of death. Okay. There is a slate. So I think this one's a little more obtuse, I'm going to be honest. This is one of my least favorite puzzles in the game, I think. This one makes um, not as much sense. Grim Reaper's list lined up in order of age, young to old. That's easy enough to do. So what you do is you line it up. Uh, Albert Lords, Lydia Findlay, Edward C. Briggs, Roberta T. Morgan, and then Trevor F. White. But like, then what are you supposed to do with that? You're supposed to enter it on the keypad, which is right over here. That's easy enough to figure out. But now we just got a bunch of letters. So like, did you type in the whole name? Fuck no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I guess it's easy enough to figure out that you're supposed to use the first letter of the first name and then type in alert. It's a, it's an okay puzzle. It's okay. It's one of the more obtuse ones. There are better and worse puzzles than this. <laughs> Amulet of Solomon. So, Amulet of Solomon, probably a reference to Solomon's seal, which in, I'm gonna get this wrong, Gnostic folklore is a seal that Solomon used to contain a djinn in clay. All right. Body's laid out on the bed. Don't feel like checking this out. Harry. Lisa. What's the matter with you? I get it now. Why I'm still alive, even though everyone else is dead. I'm not the only one who's still walking around. I'm the same as them. I just hadn't noticed it before. Lisa. Stay by me, Harry. Please. I'm so scared. Help me. Save me from them. Please. Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's theme is heart-wrenching. There's a diary on the floor. Ask doctor to let me quit being in charge of that patient. It's too weird. Still alive, but with wounds that won't heal. Told the doctor I quit. Won't work at that hospital anymore. The room is filled with insects. Even with the doors and windows shut, they still get in despite me. To the hospital. Feeling bad. Need to throw up, but nothing comes out. Vomiting only bile. Blood and pus flow from the bathroom faucet. I try to stop it, but it won't turn off. Need drug. Help me. I find Lisa a ridiculously fascinating character who is explored more in Silent Hill 2. Indirectly. I don't know if people think about that. About Lisa and Silent Hill Origins? Oh god, don't even. <laughs> oh, 
Oh no, get me started. So, okay, so Lisa was a nurse that looked after Alessa the seven years that she was in a hospital. However, the person that we meet here is not Lisa. She is Alessa's memory of Lisa. When she says, I figured out why I'm still here even though everyone else is dead. I'm the same as them. What she's talking about is the creatures, the monsters, the things running around town, the other world itself. She, like the nightmare and the creatures, is a manifestation of Alessa's power. And she realized it? That's terrifying. <laughs> and that's why she starts to fall apart at the end. That's why she can't remember what's in the basement, because she's she doesn't have all of Lisa's memories. She can only remember what Alessa remembered about her. And that's just a, an utterly tragic character. But yeah, she's a nurse that Alessa remembered. And that memory escaped her head. Harry, what are you doing? Ah, just killing time. God, this music is great. Crest of Mercury. Steel plate is screwed to the wall. <laughs> Electricity is flowing to the key. I'll get shocked if I grab it now. Hmm. Looks like an altar. Wonder what they worship. You probably don't want to know. So here's an interesting thing. I think that these two paintings right here show up again in Silent Hill 3 in the church, which explains the cult's origin story. I believe these are the paintings where a woman offers up a reed and the man offers up a snake and they both ask for, I think it's salvation and redemption. Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> but... The cult's mythology I find really, really interesting because in, and I'm going to talk about this more when we play Silent Hill 3 rather than here, because here I don't think they came up with the whole cult's mythology when they made this game. I think they filled it in later. But I find the cult's mythology really interesting because their version of God didn't create the universe or humanity. God was born from humans, like humans gave birth to God, and she gave them the ability to die, and then promised that she would bring about an eternal paradise when she returns, and in her exhaustion she dies. So God is born from people and dies with the promise that she will return one day and bring about an end to all suffering. All suffering on earth, that's all gonna, all gonna end once she brings about paradise. And so the cult is like, we need to birth another god. So that's why, like, Alessa is a thing. That's why Alessa goes through an impregnation ritual to try and birth god out of her, is because their god is going to be, you know, born from people. It's not going to return from, like, from without or something like that, which I think is just a fascinating mythology. I think it's pretty cool. I also think that the cult is wrong. I think they're wrong. I don't think their god exists. I think it's made up. It's fiction. Our writers came up with it. Get a Jonathan Frakes voice. Uh. It's false. We made it up. No, it's a fake. It's fiction. It never happened. If it's true that God is going to bring about an eternal paradise, then it is a moral wrong to stop them. 
if God's birth will bring about an end to all human suffering for eternity, there is no cost too great. <laughs> right? <laughs> the other world is paradise for them. No, it is not. No, it is not. <laughs> no, 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 no. The other world is a nightmare. And some of the cult members understand that. But this is not paradise. They don't see it as paradise. They don't see monsters as angels. That's that's not a thing. The other world, the nightmare, that is not paradise. It's it's not. <laughs> if we kill all the people. No, they're not trying to kill all the people either. They're trying to bring about an eternal paradise on Earth. And the nightmare is just the cost of doing business. For the god they birth, for the monsters, we see there is a thing outside there which delights in torturing. Is why else is the cages? No, because the god's not creating any of this. It's a little girl's psychic powers. Her nightmare is escaping her head into the world. This isn't a creation of god. It's a creation of Alessa. And it's nothing but a detriment to the rest of the people in the town. There are characters like uh, Kaufman or Vincent who are actively fighting against the monsters and the nightmare because it is a problem for them and their cult. But yeah, paradise is not the nightmare. They are very different things. The nightmare is just a side effect of the way that they're going to bring about God's return. The light to the future. That would be the light. Mm -hmm. The light illuminating the darkness. Uh, let me see. Triangle, L-shape, arrow. Good enough. Hey, look, it's uh, Kaufman's office. Hmm. There is a thing on the ground and I can't get it. <laughs> oh, here we go. White Claudia, perennial herb found near water. Reaches height of 10 to 15 inches. Oblong leaves, white blossoms. Seeds contain hallucinogen. Ancient records show it was used for religious ceremonies. The hallucinogenic effect was key. Birdcage key, good. Oh, I love this one. Chain is missing a link. There's a dagger of Melchior. All well, time to turn around and walk away. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I haven't saved in a while, but it was fucking worth it. <laughs> Okay, so this time, in order to not get bored, yeah, we put the ring of contract on here. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. All the hungry monsters, all the hungry monsters. <laughs> Bethor. No! Thirty-nine flavor? I don't think I could even name thirty-nine flavors of jelly bean. Harry, you fuck up. <laughs> VCR, it's old but usable. So the previous time we tried to use this VHS tape, it was mostly just static. Let's see what it looks like now that we're in a version of a hospital made from Alessa's memory. What is it? Still has an unusually high fever. 
eyes don't open, getting a pulse, but just barely breathing. Her skin is all charred. Even when I change the bandages, the blood and pus just start oozing through. Why? What is keeping that child alive? I can't stand it any longer. I won't tell a soul. Promise. So please... Lisa. There are specimen of butterflies and moths hanging on the wall. Six, maybe seven. Must be a kid about that age. Short black hair. <laughs> there are old fairy tales, picture books of animals and plants on the shelf. Child's drawings are scattered on the floor. You can see the that pink doggo and one of those air screamers, like the little flying guys. And there's a green guy, maybe like the guys in the sewers. And they're all kind of monsters from the from the game. Mm -hmm. Generator's working. Do you want to press the switch? Yes. Last time we were in a nightmare version of this area, I think the generator was hit with an. I don't want to say an axe, because that's not what it was. It was like this thing. It's an emergency hammer. That thing. All right, now that the power is out, we can grab this. Everything is going according to plan, sheltered in the womb. All according to Keikaku. But it's not done yet. Half the soul is lost. That is why the seed lies dormant. And what soul remains captured in that husk is buried deep down in the subconscious. Are you trying to say it won't work? That wasn't our agreement. No, no, these are just stalling tactics. If we lend a hand, we will be able to get power. Never fear, the promise shall not be broken. But the power we could draw now will be very weak. Almost nothing, unless we get the other half of the soul. We'll use a magical spell. Feeling this child's pain, it's sure to come. But that will take time. That's Kaufman there. Hmm. So after the fire, Alessa is hospitalized. Half of her soul is gone. And her power has receded into her subconscious. So her psychic powers are gone. She's trapped in her own subconscious. And for the next seven years, she is tortured to bring the other half of her soul back. <laughs> That's fucked. It's fucked up. The Disc of Ouroboros. It's another alchemy one. The Hermetic Staff and the Ouroboros are, uh, oh, alchemy guys. Alright, are we, are we good on religious symbols here? I think we've got most of them. We've got four, one, two, three, four, yeah, I think there's five. Hmm. Which one am I missing? Ah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Floors and walls are covered with graffiti. Thou possess them to guard thy spirit, evoke five rites, unveil thy fate. Okay, so I believe this next scene is gonna fill in the rest of the gaps for us. Come, come along. No, no, I don't want to. Do what mommy tells you now. I just want you to lend me a teeny bit of your power. That's all. No, I don't want to do it. It will make everyone happy, and it's for your own good, too. Oh, but Mommy, I just want to be with you. Just two of us. Please understand. 
Oh, yes, I see. Maybe Mommy has been wrong. Mommy! Why didn't I see this before? There's no reason to wait. Herein lies the mother's womb, containing the power to create life. I could have done it all myself. Mommy? That's fucked up. Dahlia ruined everything for everyone? I think the person she ruined it for the most was the cult, but uh, I'm excited to explain why that is. It's trauma. I love how this staircase just keeps going. I was shocked to realize the talisman of Metrotron was being used. See, Metrotron? Told you. Just a little longer and all would have been for naught. It's all because of that man. So, really quick, want to point something interesting out here? What's going on over with, with Dahlia over there? So, what we see here is Dahlia, Alessa, and uh, in the wheelchair there is Alessa's body. The little girl we're seeing, the little seven-year-old there, is her astral projection. It's what she remembers herself looking like. It's her self-image that's being projected out of her with her psychic powers. She doesn't know what she currently looks like. Her body is the one in the chair right now, so horribly burned and disfigured that th that is what she's looking like. It's... Mm. Is that her missing half or no? No, she's already combined. She's she's whole again. She's been a complete soul since really early in this game. Definitely before the school, yeah. Because the, the, the monsters and the nightmare don't exist unless Alessa's got her psychic powers back, right? So she's been tortured for seven years. When she gets her psychic powers back, when the, the other half of her soul rejoins her, is when her nightmare starts to escape her own head. Which is a problem for Silent Hill Origins, where the nightmare exists, even though Alessa hasn't been tortured and has already lost her psychic powers. I, I don't, I don't get it, and I don't think they did either. Doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> but uh, Origins sucks, so who knows? <laughs> even though Alessa has been stopped, his little girl has to go. What a pity! <laughs> Freeze. Devil's name? <laughs> Bodied. Dahlia. Well, well, well. To think you'd make it this far. Where's Cheryl? What have you done to her? What are you talking about? You've seen her many times, restored to her former self. I'm in no mood for jokes. <laughs> She's right there. That's absurd. You are the only one who thinks so. Why are you doing this? It's been a long seven years. For the seven years since that terrible day, Alessa has been kept alive, suffering a fate worse than death. Alessa has been trapped in an endless nightmare from which she never awakens. He has been nurtured by that nightmare, waiting for the day to be born. That day has finally come. I feel like he has been nurtured by that nightmare waiting to be born is a slight mistranslation caused by the fact that Japanese doesn't have gendered pronouns. So you just kind of got to pick one. <laughs> the same thing happens in Metal Gear Solid when they call Dr. Clark he, and then it turns out that that's paramedic. And if you want to just headcanon that paramedic is trans mask, then that's cool. You could do that then. <laughs> But yeah, that's a that's a translation thing. There's a couple of them in Silent Hill. Like, for instance, in Silent Hill 3, there's a magazine that was translated that calls the cult The Order, even though in Japanese they're never given, like, a title or a name or a proper noun to refer to them. They're just known as, you know, the cult. And it was translated as capital T, capital O, The Order. And then they went with that with all the Western games, and I don't know why. <laughs> But, okay, well, that's where that came from. The time is nigh. 
Everyone will be released from pain and suffering. Our salvation is at hand. This is the day of reckoning, when all our sorrows will be washed away. When we return to the true paradise, my daughter will be the mother of God. The true paradise, not this paradise. Okay, so I gotta point something out. In Silent Hill 3, we get a description of what God is. God herself is always described as like a woman in red or whatever. This right here is the boss of the bad ending, and it is called Incubator. There are two different bosses you can fight in this game, Incubator and Incubus. I don't know if I need to go over why those names are important. <laughs> They are related to pregnancy. <laughs> so, Incubator here is the closest thing we ever see in the Silent Hill series to what the cult's god actually looks like. This is pretty darn close to what the cult thinks god is. And it's probably because when they're gathered over Alessa, they're talking about being able to use her power and that only a fraction of it would be, would exist with her soul split, right? What Dahlia has done is use Alessa's power, which is later referred to as the power of God, also known as psychic powers, in order to turn her into what her idea of the cult's God is. And pretty soon, in just a minute here, we're going to see Alessa create what her vision of God is. Like, the God that we see in Silent Hill in any of these games is not necessarily a deity. It is people's conception of what that deity is. Rest in piss, Dahlia. Quit screwing around. Return things to how they were before. Kaufman. Did I ask for this? Nobody uses me. You won't get away with this. If the nightmare was paradise, why would Kaufman want things to return to the way they were before? Kaufman didn't ask for this. He's a member of the cult. <laughs> and a pretty high up one, too. Yeah. Things have gone wrong. <laughs> Your work is over. We don't need you anymore. What do you think you could accomplish by coming here? My, aren't we getting cocky? I love this fucker. Bet you can't see this. It loved it. I thought I got rid of that. All I had to do was plant it somewhere. Fine. You all, well, it kept you busy. Ha! You're easy. And there's more where this came from. Stop it! We see, like with the nurses and with Sybil, she's also got something growing out of her back. Well, get fucked, Dahlia. Oh, hey, that's a Baphomet? That's the incubate, the, the incubus. People call this thing Samael sometimes, and that's not true. Did you bad end? So, in either the good minus or good plus endings, we see Kaufman show up and throw the Aglophytus at the incubator to cast out the incubus. This is where the player is supposed to learn that Aglophytus can do that. It casts the evil out of something, right? And that it was in Kaufman's office in the hospital. You're, you're supposed to be able to look at the good minus ending and figure out how to get the good plus ending. Because you can also pick up some Aglophytus. And that's cool. And I think what Kaufman was expecting is for it to work like with Sybil, where it's just going to, like, 
the Aglophidus is supposed to remove that evil force or demon from something, right? And I don't think he was expecting it to be that big and powerful, <laughs> right? Okay. okay. So what's kind of cool about this fight is that if you run out of ammo, the fight turns into a timer. And if you wait for it to run out, the boss dies. Do you like the horrible whining noise? It's uh, uh, dental drill music. <laughs> I love to see it. There we go. So if this god can be influenced by people, did Harry have a small part in its creation? And maybe that's why it's killable? No, it's because Dahlia's wrong. Dahlia thinks that what can be born from Alessa is God. She thinks that if Alessa uses her powers to bring God into the world, that it will be God. But what it actually is, is Lisa. Lisa is a creation of Alessa's mind based on her memories and thoughts, right? Her opinion of a person manifests as a human being. This boss is not the cult's God. It's Alessa's idea of what the cult's God is. That's why it appears fucking evil and looking like Baphomet is because she does not have a very high opinion of the cult's god. It is a monster to Alessa. Alessa views the cult's god as evil, and that's why when it emerges from her, it's evil. It's fueled by her pain and her nightmares because Dahlia is wrong. She's fucked up. She is incorrect. <laughs> The, the god that we fight here is no different from any other monster in this entire game because the cult's god doesn't exist. It's not real. Good job, Harry. Have a baby. So that's Cheryl. So that's Heather. Alessa, once again, puts her soul into a new form as that child. Oh, Kaufman's okay. Oh, that's a shame. I was hoping that guy would get his comeuppance. Get fucked, Kaufman. <laughs> what happened to the last form? So, Alessa has existed as Alessa and as Cheryl. And when Cheryl got back to the town of Silent Hill, she recombined with Alessa and was trapped inside her burned body from 14 years ago. So that was her old form. She took her soul out of that and put it in the boy, the baby. And now she's using her powers to help them escape. game's twist is actually the horribly abused person was the good guy. The person with the trauma was the hero of this whole story. Did Silent Hill's economy survive this? Oh god no. The town was abandoned ever after this. After this happened, the, the nobody lived there ever again. Uh, some of the cult hung around a little bit, but like nobody lives in Silent Hill anymore. <laughs> you could still order a pizza there in two? No. Because the pizza is also Lisa. Stay tuned for when I talk about Silent Hill 2, and I will make that make sense. <laughs> the pizza is Eddie's Maria. I mean it. Just like Maria, the pizza has pineapple on it. <laughs> and now the blooper reel. Starring Lisa Garland. Michael Kaufman, 
Listen to this music. Could you tell these developers liked Twin Peaks? Did you ever watch Twin Peaks? <laughs> a version of Alessa we never get to see in the game. <laughs> Can you tell Takayoshi Sato just like having a lot of fun with the CG in this game? <laughs> These facial expressions are so good. All right, so I got a question for y'all. Do you feel like you understand Silent Hill any better? Have I done an okay job kind of detailing the way that I conceive the story? There are bits of interpretation to bring to this game, but as a narrative, there's a story here that makes sense. <laughs> there was a little girl born with psychic powers. Her horrible, horrible mother indoctrinated her into a terrible cult, did a ritual to try and impregnate her with their god in order to bring about its rebirth. She split her soul into two when her psychic powers caused a boiler to explode and their house to start on fire, split her soul into two, half of which became Cheryl, left the town for seven years, and was only brought back when Dahlia has been torturing Alessa for seven whole years in a nightmare she can't wake up from. And when she finally does, the nightmare starts to escape from her own head as she tries to stop the god's rebirth. So, why do people think that Silent Hill is actually about a spooky town with alternate universes where Alessa is out for revenge or something. It's a fundamental misunderstanding of the character in the story. Right, but where did it come from? Is the answer Silent Hill 2? The answer is way weirder. I would like to present to you the Silent Hill 3 official Brady Games strategy guide. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll explain. I'll explain. So, Team Silent has never come up with a plot bible for the series. The people who made Silent Hill have never explained what the story is to future developers, which is a bit of a problem, because where do people who weren't on Team Silent learn what Silent Hill is about? And that would be, wait for it, Ah, the plot, synopsis, and character relation chart in the Silent Hill 3 official Brady Game Strategy Guide. And I can prove it. There is a section of an interview with Christoph Gans, the director of the movie, who said, Anyone who has read the Silent Hill 3 official Brady Game Strategy Guide knows that we are dealing with doppelgangers when talking about Silent Hill 1. Who boy. So, what does the Silent Hill 3 official strategy guide say about uh, Silent Hill's story? Prior to the opening scenes of the original Silent Hill, members of the Order as the deviant religion in Silent Hill is known, it's not, but okay, began investigating the possibility of creating a child who might give birth to their god. Incorrect. The intention was to bring God to the world so that mankind might be destroyed and reborn anew? Where did they get this? Through magical conjuration, a fanatical sect within the Order led by Dahlia Gillespie. Was it? Dahlia in Silent Hill 1 says, I could have done it myself. Like, Dahlia comes up with this plan alone. <laughs> like, that's, th that's the cutscene we watched. It was a sect of one person. <laughs> um, created a child named Alessa. Exqueeze. <laughs> where, where did this come from? I mean, yeah, technically she created a child named Alessa. Sure. Within this child was their god in an embryonic form, waiting for the right time and the proper age of the child so that it might be conceived. So they're, they're saying that Alessa was born with the god already in her? I, I don't... I don't get that, and I don't know where that's from. Alessa had powers of her own. She could kill with a word, transform day into night, and drive people insane with a thought. When the fuck does any of that happen? When does that happen? She doesn't do any of that. <laughs> she knocks Harry down. What the fuck? She resented the other children who called her a witch. Okay, resented is a bit strong, but she was bullied. Yeah, for sure. She was called a thief and a witch on her school desk. She feared the intentions of the Order, including her mother. Why is mother in quotes? 
That's her mom. That's her mom. I don't know why this is quoted. As Alessa grew to the age of seven, she re began refusing to use her powers for the benefit of the order. That's probably true. I don't know if began refusing, because I don't know if she had been asked to do that before. It's not really gone into if Alessa had been using her powers for the cult or not. I don't think so, but... I guess she could. Started seeking ways to escape Dahlia, the woman who created and raised her had begun to abuse her. In her cruel mind, Dahlia realized she did not need the child, only the power within the girl. She locked Alessa in her room and set the house on fire? But the newspaper from seven years ago said that it was a boiler explosion, which was probably caused by her psychic powers. So I don't know where this comes from. Alessa survived the fire, though badly burned and comatose. They determined that half of Alessa's soul had somehow escaped. Sure, true. Dahlia and the Order decided to lock up Alessa within an old storage room in the basement of El Camilla Hospital. I guess. Okay. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> He assigned Lisa to take care of her, ordered her to tell no one of her presence in the hospital. Lisa was addicted to a drug created by the order distributed by Kaufman. That is possibly true. But then in Silent Hill Origins, they make it like her defining character trait and it's fucking awful. All right, I'm gonna say hold up for one second here. Uh, I wanna talk about Lisa and drugs real quick. The drug plot is introduced and explored in more detail during the 2006 Japan only visual novel mobile game, Cage of Cradle, which explains uh, how Lisa died and also her boyfriend. It's weird, but it's also written by Hiroyuki Owaku, so it's, you know, canon-ish. And then in Origins, they don't really seem to know how to write for drug addiction. So they make Lisa just kind of loopy and weird a lot of the time and the way that that winds up being expressed is like showing her in a hotel room with Kaufman or uh, her just, just being kind of weird in the theater but the thing is it's relatively indistinguishable from the rest of the writing in that game which comes from a perspective of well in Silent Hill 2 characters talk in a way that is stilted and awkward so we're gonna make every character in this game talk like Angela from Silent Hill 2 and and so that's that's what they do with Lisa in Origins. But then I was thinking about it I was like okay so what's the idea of Lisa's character in here? What is the drug plot doing for Lisa? And I think I figured it out and it's that Lisa is Laura Palmer. Both of these are characters that die before the start of their respective stories. They are seen only in dreams, and they also have some toxic sexual relationships and a history of uh, drug use and addiction. I think that's I think that's Lisa. That's Lisa is Laura Palmer. I think that's what's going on. I just like Twin Peaks, and so did the creators of Silent Hill. She went along with the scheme. At some point, Lisa and Kaufman had a blowout. The nurse threatened to tell someone about Alessa. She disappeared without a trace. The dark power dwelt inside Alessa and tortured her mind with visions of cruelty and evil. Alessa's fear and hatred nurtured the god within and its power grew. That's Dahlia's interpretation. Alessa spent her worst days in the hospital. The transformation makes it easy to understand why some of the darkest and most evil places in the game are filled with hospital equipment. Alessa contained only half a soul because in the fire she created an infant version of herself and relocated it to the side of the road outside Silent Hill. That's true. Four years later, Harry's wife, due to complications from her illness, I guess? The Silent Hill 1 strategy guide said it's some disease in the visual novel. It's a car crash. I don't, I don't know who to believe. Oh yeah, that illness, car crash. <laughs> her mind called out telepathically to her sibling and begged her to return to Silent Hill. That's true, but also not within her control. That was the ritual that Dahlia was doing. Seems to be written by someone who played the game while half awake and also didn't interrogate whether or not everything that literally every character says might be 100% true. Funny you should say that. <laughs> Actual plot synopsis is mostly kind of just a factual retelling of Silent Hill 1. Casting a spell, Dahlia reunited the two Alesses into one being, the Mother of God. I guess? There's not two Alessas. There's Alessa and then there's her astral projection. The old hag then began the process to force the mother to conceive the deity worshipped by the Order. 
Kaufman felt betrayed because she would not share these powers with him? Question mark? So here's the thing. What does this person think that Kaufman was doing with the Aglophytus? He struck the Mother of God with a ceremonial substance named Aglophytus. This mixer caused Alessa to eject the God prematurely. Now, I don't know about that. How premature could it possibly be if Dahlia was going to force the Mother to conceive the deity worshipped by the Order? Ten minutes? Isn't the final boss form different in the bad ending? In the bad ending, you fight the incubator. You fight Alessa, and it's her that strikes Dahlia down with a bolt of lightning. So, let me say something real quick. I think that Dan Burlew is a little bit wrong about Silent Hill, and was wrong about Silent Hill like 20 years ago or something like that. That ain't a fucking crime, leave the guy alone. It seems like a perfectly fine person. I don't have anything against this guy. I just think that he was wrong about Silent Hill 20 fucking years ago. Don't any of you fucking dare to contact this person. <sighs> so, here's the reason I say that. Is because not only did Dan Burlew write the Silent Hill 3 official strategy guide, he also wrote on GameFAQ under the name President Evil. So this was posted when Silent Hill came out. Like, basically the year of. So I expect it to be a little bit wrong. That's fine based actually no it's that, that's a good move like went from writing game facts to writing official strategy guides unfortunately he was also i'm gonna say responsible for but it's not true he also wrote the final fantasy 9 strategy guide which is famously awful which is not his fault it was the fault of square enix fucking squaresoft just like, I don't blame Dan Burlew if people think that Silent Hill is alternate universes. I blame Konami for not having Team Silent write a plot synopsis. For them just being like, yeah, I don't know, check the strategy guide, I guess. Apparently someone at Konami signed off on all of the information that's in the Brady Games guide. Dan Burlew has said that he was in contact with them and they gave him notes on what to include and what not to. But, uh... No information about who that was. <laughs> was it a person on Team Silent? Was it some lawyer? Was it just a guy? We don't know. Dan Burlew doesn't know and neither do you. So I just want to really quick take a look at President Evil's plot synopsis for Silent Hill 1. Because this is one of the most unhinged things ever. Where is Cheryl and who is Alessa? The answer for all its complexities is that Alessa is Cheryl three exclamation marks. Just like Darth Vader is Luke's father. No, not just like that, actually, because Alessa and Cheryl are two different people made of the same soul. Darth Vader isn't part of Anakin's soul in a new... It's fuck it. The revelation at the end of the game threw me for a loop too, but it is clearly stated by Dahlia at the end. Dahlia replies that Cheryl is sitting right in front of him and she has been there all along. She is Cheryl. So why didn't she ever talk to him or let him know who she really was? Because Cheryl never really existed. In fact, neither did Alessa. Both of the girls are only conjurations of Dahlia's cult? I'm sorry, what? The cult wanted to bring their dar their Lord Samael to the... M I'm, I'm begging you. <laughs> Please. Please, I'm begging you. <laughs> The cult's god is only ever referred to as god. <laughs> so that he could take control of the universe, obviously. Obviously. But for the cult to benefit, they'd have to be able to control Samael. The only way to do this was to summon Samael into an unborn fetus. A child that the cult could r raise and teach to control its powers. Dahlia conceived the child. Somehow. Come. She conceived the child somehow with the help of Dr. Kaufman. He, he either inseminated her or had intercourse with her. <laughs> cool. I mean, cut Dahlia some slack. This was like, what, 14 years ago? Sure, she lived. We all did. We've all had rich lives. Maybe she was a freak when she was younger. We don't know. When the child was born, only half of Samael's dark soul, capital D, capital S, had been summoned into the child. This reveals to Dahlia that in order to summon the other half of Samael, she must have another child? This is how there are two children. What happened to the first Alessa? Sorry, what? <laughs> so there's two Alessas and a Cheryl? What? <laughs> 
Why? What? One of the members has some kind of perception that tells him that only half of the Dark Soul is contained in the child. This is after she got burned. That's not when she was conceived. What are you talking about? Dahlia's standing right there. She's not laying in the stirrups, my dude. The cult has failed temporarily. Burning the child has placed it into a coma? When Dahlia begins to reveal that she knows how to summon the second part of the Dark, s dark Soul. The scene cuts away. They burned Alessa on purpose. I hate this idea. I hate this. For some reason, this became a really common misconception. Why do people think that this is true? I don't get it. They make this happen in the movie, and then it also happens in Origins. Because, I don't know, I guess somebody read it here, is what I think. <laughs> Dude was probably like 16 when he wrote this. Yes, which is why uh, we need to cut him slack. I don't mind that this person is wrong about Silent Hill. I just need to freak out about it. <laughs> they reckon from Origins because they saw this synopsis. I think so. I can't necessarily prove that, but I do know that they read the plot synopsis in the Silent Hill 3 strategy guide. It is only one step to go, hey, maybe we should look at the other plot synopsis this guy made. He changed the canon without even trying. I Exactly? I hate that. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> he changed the whole plot line on accident with his fucking MatPat theories. It's like if Toby Fox had nothing to do with Undertale 2, but the creators of Undertale 2, instead of playing the first game, watched a bunch of MatPat videos about Undertale, and they made that canon. <laughs> 14 years before the events of the game in neither Silent Hill that exists in the game, but the real one. <laughs> I'm die. I got a question. If we don't see the real Silent Hill in the video game, what does Harry mean when he says it's being taken over by the other world? What is it? What does it mean in this context? Does he mean that the foggy dimension is being invaded by the other world? In which case, what? <laughs> Why? This way they could control him and together they would all rule the cosmos. Nice plan. <laughs> I feel like the game is simpler than this. I feel like this is way more complicated than the game is. Not in a good way. So Alessa was conceived. For seven years, they tried fruitlessly to teach the stubborn child to tap into the power she carried. She refused. The cult locked her in her bedroom and set fire to the house. I don't know where they're getting this. This is the fire that spread and nearly burned up half the town. Fire broke out in town six homes dist- What a tiny town! <laughs> it's only 12 houses in town! <laughs> This is when Dahlia begins to reveal her idea to the cult. She'd had previously about conceiving a second child. The ritual is performed again and a second child is born. This is Cheryl, essentially. Think of it in metaphor. Oh god, okay. Break it down for me, President Evil. This symbolizes Cheryl crashing into herself, her real self. Also, think of the fact that there are two Alessas at the end of the game as being a metaphor for being two halves of the dark soul. There was metaphysically only one girl conjured one half at a time, two half girls, two half dark souls, one demon god, Samael. It's a metaphysical equation written across the entire game. It has taken me almost a full year, but I have cracked it. A uh, Pepe Silva meme. <laughs> Why does Cheryl, who now appears as Alessa, conjure horrible monsters to try and kill the man who raised her? Oh, I gotta know why he thinks that. I gotta know. I, I really gotta know. It couldn't be because her psychic powers cause her thoughts to become manifest, so that when she astral projects herself in a place, her nightmares are also overlaid on that place. Couldn't be that. Gotta be something more complicated, right? <laughs> why Harry? Your game is contained within a larger, more metaphysical game between Dahlia and Alessa. Think of it as a chess match. <laughs> Alessa's the one who created the board, so she has all the pieces. Her advancement across the board is signified by the mark of Samael. It's okay, we finished the game. You can call it the Seal of Metrotron. Dahlia has only two pieces herself in the Flowerose. She needs it to checkmate Alessa. Alessa controls the other pieces. Alessa loses pieces here and there, but she can conjure more. Play can go on infinitely. We're talking. What? What is this? 
Alessa generates the Lisa piece from her memories of the dead nurse. At least he realized that Lisa was a, a conjuration. At least he realized that Lisa wasn't real. Harry admits to Sybil that Cheryl is not his real daughter. He never told Cheryl, etc., etc. Wait, it is only then when he is ready and willing to admit his fault in the whole affair that Cheryl appears to him? Uh, fuck you? <laughs> Harry's fault? What, not telling Cheryl that she's adopted yet? What? What? <laughs> Harry never achieves a truly happy ending, only what passes for one. This is due to his limited understanding of the events transpiring. Yeah, kinda, I guess. <laughs> I do not accept this Harry slander, though. The most startling revelation of Silent Hill is that the hero has been working for the wrong side all along. He is not the hero. He is nothing but a pawn. And therefore, so is the player. We've all been duped. And it is Konami who is cackling madly at us all. We've been duped. Go one step further. Who's the hero here? It's Alessa. I don't, I don't think they figured out that it's Alessa. Topic two, Silent Hill. First of all, Silent Hill's not real because it's a town in a video game. Now, I don't mind this because I feel like this is kind of an interpretation that I bring to Metal Gear Solid 2. So like, that's fun. That's cool. Don't mind it. But like, where are you going with that? Where are you going? So the developers had to be vague in the plot since the ESRB would never allow a game with blatant Satanistic elements to be published in the continental US. <laughs> Think so? Really? <laughs> Even in 2000, come on. Meanwhile, Doom. The story had to be left vague on purpose. It's vague on purpose because that's th the way they wanted to tell the st that's the story. It was the artistic intent. <laughs> Your average video game player is 10 to 26. Half of them are going to have a rough time putting the fragmented pieces together. Final product is a game that not only has many puzzles, but the entire game is one big puzzle. So now, hopefully you get the impression that I'm attempting only to solve the big puzzle. Am I wrong? Is there another explanation that's more plausible? The only explanation that makes any sense! The developers have a deep love for the mo more irreverent aspects of American television programs and films. Yeah, I guess. Sure. Okay. Why not? Mention Twin Peaks? That's good. You bring in other media to your critical analysis. I like that. I like when you point out the inspirations, tie it all together. You go, okay, here's where these elements came from. Create a genealogy of the creation of the work. This is good stuff. This is critical analysis. I like to see it. Stephen King, Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan wrote about the theory that there are infinite worlds layered on top of one another. Fox. Say, oh my god. The town of Silent Hill would seem to be caught between two worlds. One where it is foggy all the time. No, the mist is not there as a convenient way to help the game render more easily, three exclamation marks. Look at games like Tomb Raider and Shadow Man. You can see miles away. The whole town has been sealed off by what looks like cooling magma. Does it? Does it? Where? What? Who let this man cook? <laughs> <laughs> this is the world where you always meet Dahlia, except for the end of the game when she's in the other world, but okay. This is where you find clues that are told where to search next. Then there is the other world of Silent Hill, which takes over from time to time, a world of utter darkness. It is raining, not snowing. The mark of Samael can be seen cropping up with greater and greater frequency. The only way to get around is with the help of a flashlight. There seems to be a lot more monsters hunting you. Let us assume since there are monsters and strange things in both Silent Hills, that neither version is the real Silent Hill. Why are we doing that? Just because there's monsters? Why are we assuming that? Why is that assumption coming up? <laughs> Evidence, please. Please. Let's say there is a real world where there is a real Silent Hill. What happened to it? It's still there. So we're dealing with three Silent Hills. Misty, dark, and real. What power conjures these fake Silent Hills? It's safe to assume that Dahlia somehow controls the misty Silent Hill, and Alessa controls the dark one. Sure. Why not? I mean, if we're just making shit up, <laughs> why, why not just be like, well, Pyramid Head controls misty Silent Hill? Who gives a fuck? Alessa has conjured a fake Silent Hill to hide herself in so that Dahlia does not find her. She has a device called the Flowros which can bend alternate universes? Explain. Exp explain. What does the Flowros do? I got a question for you. What? What is the Flowros and what it do? 
it breaks through the temptations of other spirits and devils, allows you to see through illusions with the power of flames. Oh, cool. Oh, wow, these symbols all look real familiar. Wow, I wonder if those are on any of the doors in Silent Hill. Anyway, no. Uh, yeah, probably bend alternate universes. That seems like a thing that should do. Alessa conjures an alternate Silent Hill to hide in. Dahlia can't get to Alessa, but she says a device which can alter or affect the world that she's hiding in. She can conjure herself into it. Alessa controls this world. What? <laughs> what? Does he think that they've been just doing this for like years? B it baffles. It, it boggles my mind. <laughs> Here's my theory. Here's what I want to posit. This GameFAQs article is very silly and wrong, right? This is where alternate universe theory comes from in Silent Hill. This is where it's from. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to point out that it's silly because the idea that Silent Hill is like a misty version and a dark version and then the real town is equally silly to anything else that's in here. Because not only do fans believe that this is true, but the developers of all of the Silent Hill games after Silent Hill 4 think that this is true. That's wild, right? Isn't that wild? I just think that's neat. <laughs> like, I hate that because it's one of my favorite games ever. But like, it's neat that somebody wrote this GameFAQs article 23 years ago and then completely changed the canon of Silent Hill forever on accident. Oops, that's wild. You know, Fans wouldn't be able to change the canon of Silent Hill this way until just this year when Silent Hill Ascension let you change the canon of Silent Hill forever. And that's that's what it's really all about, right? That's that's the interesting thing about Silent Hill is that it took 23 years for them to come back to this idea of just letting the fans change the canon forever. <laughs> Do I have more to say about Silent Hill? Why, yes. Yes, I do. Am I going to say it tonight? No. No, probably not. I think I got my point across. 